Welcome everybody to episode number 29 of the Third Cell Gaming Podcast. I'm your host, Tyler. Joined as always by, first of all, Mike. Mike, how are you today? Entertained as always, dude. So, uh, yeah. neighbor, neighbor suggested, why don't you get on Tinder? So I did. Oh, God. And, yeah, I know. This is the greatest thing. Can you shut the fuck up for two seconds in the middle of my thing? Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, so I got on there. There were like four people on there. Left, left, left. And that was the end of that uninstall. So right. there's, there's not a lot going on around here. People are just not up with the times. Um, with that being said, with times, 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 um, I hear that you are talking to a gentleman from Fullerton. I want to say, yo, yeah. what's going on, guys? Because that's my stomping ground. So Fullerton. Yeah. yeah. From uh, Southern California. So that's yep. awesome. Yeah. In our, in, our, in our Facebook group. So thanks for LA joining. LA County. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Yep. So. Spent uh, most two, of my, three. Spent, shut up, I'm trying to finish my thing. Oh my god. Spent most of my time in Anaheim Orange and Boynton Park and uh, you know, definitely made it out to Fullerton on more than one occasion, that's for sure. Mm. But I want to say, yo, what's up to you guys out there? And I hope everything is going good. If it wasn't for the cost of living, I'd still be out there. Yeah. So all right. Well, good to hear from you, Mike. Uh, glad Tinder went well. Mm-hmm. Um it was so, open and shut case. Also, also joining us is uh from Canada County, um, Graham. <laughs> Graham they let me today. out, man. Let me out. Shh, don't tell them. All I had to say was, "I'm sorry." <laughs> so <laughs> new. So if you if you're a part of our Facebook group, you saw the picture posted today of the kid that drove like 200 plus miles an hour in Canada County, what Oklahoma, Mike? Yeah, 209 miles an hour in Canada County. Yeah, so we figured that you know Canada has one road. Which we established last week, so it makes sense that it would have one county. <laughs> so <laughs> we just figured it was Graham. Yep. <laughs> so, all right, but Graham had Graham had travels to Alberta this week. Everything went well. Everything went well. All right. Just had to leave my Xbox One behind, but uh, oh, brought my 3DS. Oh, no. so. I got my 3DS yeah. though, and we're getting some good use in it. And right. uh, so I'm not left alone in the video game world. So how's everything in the North Pole? Things are good. Actually, really good. A little uh, chilly. It's a little chilly. It's not as chilly as I was expecting. Actually, the other day it was three degrees here, plus three. I actually left wow. colder weather to come to warmer weather, which I was expecting to leave warmer weather to go to colder weather. So that was a bit of a surprise, but mm. it's it's ending real soon. I see some minus fifteens and uh, lower colder than that coming up next week. Well, I'm happy to hear that. So I'm pissed off. <laughs> like it's it's it jumped up to sixty degrees like yesterday here. Yeah, and then on Christmas, it's Christmas. it's going to be sixty on Christmas and rain where I'm at. I know See, it's going to be raining that, here too. Why, and that's, that's why one thing Christmas requires, man, is snow and winter, cold weather. <laughs> yes, yeah. which we're not going to have here or in Arkansas, which was where Eugene is joining us from. How are you doing? Hey, Merry Christmas! Yeah, happy, happy Boxing Day to our one yes. Canadian friends. <laughs> yes, yes. Graham, are you planning? Do you have your credit cards ready to go out on Boxing Day? Well, like I said, I'm here visiting, so either I gotta walk uh, a long ways, or I gotta find somebody who will drive me in for Boxing Day. Okay. <laughs> so, Uber, dude. We'll I see. know they got Uber in Canada. Y- yeah, you know how much Uber would you? You don't know real where I am. Probably I am eighty-five loonies out in the middle <laughs> of nowhere. It would probably <laughs> cost me five hundred dollars to Uber out here. <laughs> All right. So not an option. You, you gotta so tip at least fifteen or twenty loonies. Yeah. yeah, it's not going to cost that much. Well, not that much, but you know, it it'd be in the seventy mark for sure. It's high here. It was it was ten dollars for two miles here. It, that's ridiculous. That's oh, because we're in the middle of nowhere too. I mean, yeah, Uber's not so... cheap anywhere you go. That's no. not true, my friend. That is not true. Uber's Uber's expensive. It's actually more expensive than some cabs, is what I learned. Because certain like times of the day, they can jack up their prices. Oh yeah, and yeah, then when they, they jack up the prices, it's more. Yeah, they do warn you, but then it's more expensive than cabbies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, cool. So, all right. Now that we have covered Uber, um, <laughs> yeah. let's, uh, let's that's the show on. for this week. Yeah, yes. they, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Um, See you next week. <laughs> yeah. So, congratulations to our prize winner, by the way. Um, no, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get into. Yay me! Uh, we'll get into the news here in a second, but first of all, just want to let you know ways to join the conversation. We have quite a few ways now. Uh, one, you join our Facebook group. Uh, go to Facebook and look up Third Sun Gaming. Uh, join the group there. It is a closed group, so uh, you know, your boss won't see what you're writing or anything like that. And uh, 
you know, it works out. We've had some really good discussion there the past week or so. So I appreciate everybody that's getting involved in that. Keep them you coming. can, yeah, you can follow us on Twitter at Third Sun Gaming, all one word, T H R D S U N Gaming, and uh, join the discussion there as well. Also, we have a we have a group on Xbox. Uh, you can join that uh, Third Sun Gaming, and if you have an Xbox One, take part in, in the discussion there. I uh, also want to announce that starting with this episode, every episode that we have will be posted on YouTube as well. So you can listen to that audio file there, and hopefully we'll be uh, getting up a lot more gaming videos once we start the new year. That's a goal of ours heading into 2017. So with all that, let's head into the news this week. It is a pretty short news week, so we're going to actually have two different kind of segments during the news. We're going to talk about the news items that we have, and then we're going to kind of go into a wish list uh, for 2017. So, that we have. So, let's start with the news. First, DICE. If you're a fan of Battlefield 1, uh, DICE started to leak information about the upcoming They Shall Not Pass expansion for Battlefield 1. Uh, first of all, brings the French army into the game. Uh, features the battles of Verdun uh-huh. and Soissons. Uh-huh. And this is releasing in March 2017. So, the, the cool thing about this is that in the Battle of Verdun, there, there was so much, like... Uh, like cannon fire, that it set the forest around the town on fire. Huh. And that's actually reflected in the game, some of the screenshots. Yeah. Like in the background, the forest is on fire. Yeah. Cool. So, so there's I mean, cannons, that's cool. you're, you're telling me. There will be cannons. Yeah, I mean, and there are in the... In, Dice in, doesn't leave out any well, details. Yeah, no, I mean, there's yeah. going to be some cool stuff in this. So the atmosphere seems really authentic. It seems cool. <laughs> what are you guys' thoughts on this? Mike, before you start... Uh, Graham, what are your thoughts? <laughs> well, my first thought is when I hear they shall not pass, I think of Lord of the Rings. But yes. anyway, besides that, it's you great do, you to see. Nerd. Bring me more. Actually, I think of Devin Dubnik, but whatever. I thought that was a Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, shut up. Wow. Okay, okay. Well, let's just let that one go. Everyone go- Google what Devin Dugan? Dubnik. No, Deb- yeah. Devin it's- Dubnik. It's, They'll have more trouble trying to figure out, find out what it is. But don't Google don't it. waste your time. Don't, don't. Google it, yeah, guys. No. But let's talk about video games. Seeing we're a video game podcast. All right. It's oh, always God. Shut great. Up. To... <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Take it away, Mike. <laughs> no, okay. go ahead, Grant. It's always good to see Battlefield bringing out more expansions and like bringing more countries into it, and just bringing more and more information and like people like this. And now there's cannons. So I like it's good to see they're supporting it, and I'm looking forward to it. And this would be what paid DLC, I'm guessing, right? So yeah, it's part of the if, season pass. So yeah, if people are thinking about getting at least this one and maybe another one, just get the season pass. You will yep. save yourself so much money, and you'll be glad that you did it. Plus, I think you still get those like premium battle packs if you get the season pass now. Yeah, yeah. So there I think you, go. you still do. So you get that on top of it. Yeah, I'm sure there's quite a few members of our community that are going to get some Xbox or PlayStation, you know, money cards yeah. to spend uh, in the next few days. So, you know, Battlefield Season Pass, not a bad thing to spend it on. No, and Battlefield will be supported for a long time. Like, even yes. Battlefield 4. Like, that game's... There's been, like, three games come out since then, and Battlefield 4 it. is still being played by tons of people. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. any any investment into Battlefield is not a bad investment. No, not at all. All right. Anybody else? Yeah, there was actually a thread on uh, Reddit when it asked, uh, um, "What what was your what was your favorite purchase as far as DLC goes, and what was your least, you know, what what, you know, what was your least favorite?" Mm -hmm. And a lot of people kept saying kept saying the Battlefield for Premium, I mean Platinum Edition, Premium Edition was Premium back then, right? Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. And because of all the support they did and everything like that, a lot of people. A lot of people said like the division for bad stuff. You know, yeah. um, some people, a lot of actually, a lot of people said the Gears of War one too. Huh. Gears of War, a new one, yeah. For good or bad? Bad. Really? Yes. That's surprising. Yeah. So uh, with that being said, uh, yeah, I guess what, boys and girls, I actually fired up Battlefield One for the first time today. Yay! Yay. Woo! Welcome to the club. I, I know, right? So isn't, isn't that beginning to the game, like, completely miserable? That's what I said. That's exactly yeah. what I said. I'm just I'm dying like, wow, left and right continuously. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, and like, yeah, this is uplifting. You know, every every person that they that they give their uh, born and, and you know birth and death date, and it's like you know less than the drinking age is like, oh my god, <laughs> less than the you drinking. are not expected to survive. <laughs> well, thanks, good, thank you, thank you. I'm glad I wasn't expected to survive because I'm not going to. And uh, um, so far, so good. I I'm sitting there. I'm actually looking at the server list right now, and I'm gonna like turn my microphone off and go play in a second. But uh, um. Yeah. All right, well, good to have you on the show. Yeah. <laughs> you, guys, you guys got it from here. I know you do. And, Graham, just so you know, there, Captain Fuddy Duddy with this is a gaming podcast. Nah. Um, got a, um, went over a neighbor's house who has zero interest in gaming. And I said, you got to listen to this. So I played the last five minutes of the, um, hold on. <coughs> the last five minutes of the playoff uh, um, podcast for him. Sure. By the time he was done listening, he was red in the face and said that he would rather he would rather listen to this than watch watch you know TV shows that he watches and everything like that. And you know we're talking a we're, we're talking a fifty year old man so who has one you know country guy everything like that. So we can keep it open and we can talk about anything we want to you know. So let's let's do that you know. All right, sounds good. So your thoughts on my your thoughts th- on Battlefield? Yeah. It, I did my thoughts on that. All right. Thank you. It's good. good. I'm good. Thank you for that in-depth review. It's good. So. (laughs) 9.0 out of 10. Yeah. Yeah. 9.0, like IGN, like just, you know, when they do the summary, like, it's good. Yeah. That's it. Sounds great. My 50-year-old neighbor likes it. Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, I I will say, though, that Battlefield has a far reach of appeal because my brother, who is not a big time gamer uh-huh. um, bought an Xbox one for his, you know, family, including himself. And he, when I was away, he asked, he came and asked me like what, uh, what type of game would I like? So I kind of went through, and I know he likes shooters. So I kind of went through all the shooters to him. Uh, once I explained and showed him like screenshots of battlefield one, he was on board and bought the battlefield one, like the green edition, the military green. Yeah. Uh, one terabyte on cyber Monday. So oh, nice. that's a slick looking box. Yeah. Yeah, so he's pretty pumped to get that open up this week, and I think he's—I don't think his kids are going to get to play it a whole lot. So, <laughs> it's, uh, does it have grips on the controller now? Uh, I think that one does. I think that oh, one does. Sweet. I think most of the new ones now come with that. So, yeah. So, Battlefield One has a pretty broad appeal on you know, and I think it is a testament to you know what we talked about last week with with uh, Call of Duty sales declining. Mm-hmm. Um, what people are actually looking for now, so. Well, I don't blame them. I mean, look at look at Battlefield. I mean, they supported four for what four years, you know, yeah. and they owned up to the, the net code and everything like that. Got yeah. everything fixed. Didn't turn their back or go silent or anything. And people came right back around because they fixed it. And now the, the net code is just fine in this one, you know. And yeah. it's just it's just going to be better. It's just going to be better than the last one. You know? Yeah, I like I I've said many times I love the mechanics and just the pure fun of Titanfall two, but yeah. in terms of like atmosphere, you can't yeah. beat Battlefield one. Oh, for no, it's so man. realistic. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing with planes crashing around you and buildings yeah. like like if you're in a tank, you like hide into a building. Well, the tank would just take up the whole building, yep. and if you don't leave that building, that building will crumble on you, and you will die from that. Mm-hmm. Nice. Meanwhile, well, just doesn't leave any any details. No, they don't. The environment, they they're just fantastic at it. That's yep. what they're yep. great at. Yep. Meanwhile, yep. in Call of Duty, you shoot an RPG at a chain link fence, and the chain link fence wins. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So. That's right. why I'm always sold on Battlefield over Call of Duty, just because oh, it's totally. more realistic and it's right. just the atmosphere, like you guys were saying. Hundred bucks for four years, you got me. I'm on. Oh yeah, I mean, like yeah. Mike, you you got me going on Battlefield with Battlefield Three. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and I, and I played Bad Company too. That's but I just but I just played the single too. player. I didn't play the multiplayer. Yeah. And I was always kind of a Call of Duty multiplayer guy. Yeah. And you got me into Battlefield Three, and I played a little bit of it. But then with four, I really jumped in, and just it's yeah. so far superior. It's not even funny. So yeah, you were you were shotguns. Oh yeah, uh, four. God, it yeah. was like it was like rage induced fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I know. All I put up I put up some good KDRs in Battlefield Four after oh, yeah, after yeah. I got used to it. So. I'm um, hoping to get hoping to get that in Battlefield One too. I just need to put the time in. So, all right on the on uh, the topic of Battlefield One. If you're a fan, the holiday event started yesterday, which is Thursday, in the U.S. and it goes through December 29th. So players who log in and receive free dog tags and a free battle pack. Premium members, so if you have the season pass, 
you will also get two superior battle packs on top of the, I think, 14 that you get to begin with. So, uh, some cool stuff going on there. Lots of holiday events going on for lots of different games. And I like that trend, actually. Oh, I love it. I, awesome. I remember back when, like, you know, you'd have to go into, like, World of Warcraft and they have, like, the Christmas theme going on in the towns. And that was, like, the holiday event. Whereas now, all these games on different consoles have different holiday events going on with different things. Overwatch has a big one right now. Uh, Battlefield has one. Gears has one. Um, I'm sure I'm missing out on a ton. Well, this weekend, uh, tons of games have a uh, yeah. XP this weekend. So. Yep. So yep. just a ton of stuff going on to celebrate the holiday and and in different ways. So uh, really cool there. Any thoughts on, on that before we move on? I was say it's great too because it's like place where you guys are, where you guys got no snow and it doesn't feel like Christmas at all. Yeah. But then you guys play this and you get these Christmas updates and it's like yep. it kind of helps get you into the Christmas spirit. Yep. Yeah, playing Battlefield One definitely gets me into the Christmas spirit. <laughs> <laughs> if Listen, we can play this they, weekend, they call it Die Hard a Christmas movie, so we can, so could it, it is a Christmas. Die Hard is totally a Christmas movie. The best Christmas movie. Yep. No, 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 it is right, but it's like it's an action movie though, right? So it's next to Home Alone. Yeah. Home Alone's all the way. It's Christmas vacation. Then the Gremlins. Jingle all the way. Oh, Gremlins, yeah. Gremlins, great Christmas. Good yeah, call. that was that was definitely a great Christmas. I time. forgot that was set at Christmas time. But yeah, good yeah. call. All right. So, uh, if you're... <laughs> so, X... <laughs> Xbox and PlayStation 4 owners um, have a chance to save a lot of money right now. So, the Xbox holiday sale started Thursday, yesterday <laughs> in the U.S., um, and everywhere worldwide, and the PlayStation 4 flash sale started as well. So, uh, I know Mike will be going to a lot of these deals is when we get into the deal segment, but please go take a look on uh, on Xbox and PlayStation 4, your console of choice to see what deals are going on. I know Xbox has a lot of da- has daily deals every day. Today was Peggle 2, and um, I don't know. Uh, I don't remember the other one. Uh, Pale 2 was like... Raymond, three... Raymond Legends, dude. For yes, that was it. Cents. Raymond Legends, and then Pale 2 was like 3 bucks. Yep, 375 um, That's, that's so, worth 375 I love yeah. that. So it was Raymond Legends for $6.60. If well, you wasn't, did not it, get wasn't it, it, it game, free with games? Yeah, games with gold. Yeah, it was. Get it, then. It's, it's so worth the 660 it, If you guys don't know, too, there's also a mode in there where you can play this, this weird kind of soccer. It's an actual soccer ball. Um, same screen, one versus one. Oh yeah, and, I remember that. Yeah, and it's oh. kind of like up in the the goal is not on the ground; it's up in the air. Yep. And so it, it's actually real fun just to, to toy Can around. We play that a little bit, Mike. I played it with Andrea and yeah. Marty back in the day. Mm-hmm. You know, we have me and you have not played that. No, but that's actually kind of fun. Just just you know, if you got a girlfriend or something like that who who really doesn't like video games, but you guys are bored or something like that, that's great because it's just it's just like a weird version of Palm. So. Yeah. That's in there, too. There's so much stuff in there. It's not boring at all. $6.60 for that game is a steal. Yeah, it really is. The game is fun. And I don't know. I mean, even without the extra stuff added in, the game's pretty fun. Sadly, I I never got a chance to make it to Rayman Legends. I played the uh, first Rayman that came out on the PS3 and uh, 360. I forgot the name of it. Uh, uh, Maybe you guys can remember. Origins? uh, Yeah, Rayman Origins. Yep, I actually played it on the Vita and the PS3, and I I love that game. But I I have Rayman Legends. I have it on three uh, on the Xbox One and uh, Vita as well. And I I just really need to get into it. Maybe now's a good time. Now is a good time. So, all right. So lots of good deals going on. Be sure to check those out as uh, as the weeks go on. I know the Xbox One goes through January 9th, and they have a sale where they have a block of games that are on sale for one week, and then they'll have another week's worth starting after that. So. Be sure to check that out. Uh, next up, Star Wars Battlefront. If you're a fan of that game, or if you're excited for Star Wars after seeing Rogue One, which I'm not yet, so no spoilers, please. Um, they're offering free uh, DLC play this weekend. Yep. So you can play through all four DLC packs, including the Rogue One pack. Yep. Um, also, Death Star, Bespin, and um, the uh, Jabba's Palace one, which I think is called Outer Rim. If I remember right, um, yep, uh, free expansion play this weekend, plus double XP for this weekend yep. in the game, so you can level up faster. So, uh, good opportunity to get back in this game if you haven't yet, or if you're looking to jump in, great time to get yeah, going. Grant, it, Grant, what were you yes. going to say? I'd also like to note, too, that uh, Star Wars Battlefront is free on EA Access. It's in the mm-hmm. vault. Oh. So, 
now you guys have all the expansions for this weekend. Yep. So yep. just go in the vault and download it, and you have access to all this, and it is double XP like Tyler said. So this is a yep. great time to get in there on that. And then you can try out the expansions and see if it's worth getting the season pass mm -hmm. because I'm not sure what the season pass is right now, but it's, it's on sale right now. It's on sale, right? 1959 right now. So yep. check it out, and it'd be well worth it if you have EA access because you already have the base game, and now you have access to everything. Mm -hmm. With just a few extra dollars, so I think that even the ultimate edition uh, with everything is like twenty seven dollars right now. So yeah, it's still really great cheap. Deals. Yeah, it's like ten, fifteen, and twenty seven something. Yeah. yeah, great deals. Yeah. All right. So yeah, jump into that if you're uh, excited about Star Wars at all. Uh, wrapping up the news this week. So Nintendo Switch. We've been a pretty EA heavy news segment so far. So Nintendo Switch uh, found to be running differently when uh, when it's actually docked in. Uh, on, on that uh, stationary dock that it has. So, Eugene, I know you're pretty excited about Nintendo Switch. So, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, does it really matter to you? Well, so, uh, Polygon put up an article, uh, as reported by Digital Foundry, citing several unnamed sources, the tech focus imprint at Eurogamer subject, suggests that the undocked Nintendo Switch hits clock speeds 40% lower than those... Uh, when the system is uh, docked, connected to the dock. So this this really isn't that important to me, because like I said before, uh, the whole do undocking feature and taking it with you on the go, go is kind of a gimmick to me. I, I don't see myself, uh, I, I'm afraid I'll break it personally, so I really don't want to take it off the dock. For, but for people like uh, Graham, you know, Graham has talked a lot about um, taking uh, games on the go, which, you know, I, I may, uh, you know, bring it to the bedroom or bring it to the bathroom, uh, you know, for sure. a few minutes while I'm in there. Uh, but I, I don't see myself taking it on the road, sticking it in my backpack or whatever, and, and taking it out with me and bringing mm -hmm. the controllers, taking it to a bar like Karen does in the commercial. I don't plan on <laughs> doing that. I don't doing all that, but uh, a lot of people are disappointed and criti uh, being very... Uh, uh, they're criticizing Nintendo for this because Nintendo was boasting just... Uh, uh, the t and I think in the video was too, the, the Tegra processor that they have in this boasting about how powerful it is, but... Um, 40 40 percent speeds is a huge decrease. You know, I'm I'm not a huge uh, computer nerd where I know a lot a lot about processing speeds and things like that. But 40 percent is almost half of the processing power. So, right. I, I can I can definitely understand with the battery life because original that's reports, the big thing, right? For sure. That that is a big thing. I, I'm sure. Um, and maybe a few of you guys want to chime in on this, but uh, originally they had reported two to three hours battery life, and now they're reporting about five to six hours battery life. So it's about the okay. about the same as the Wii U gamepad. So yeah, what do you think about this, Graham? Well, um, like I was reading it too, and they were saying that it could be at a higher rate for the Tegra X1, but they, like I said, we've talked about it, they underclocked it. So they, I know it's 40% less, but it could have been actually higher if they chose to, but they didn't want to go to the capacity of the X1. So I think what you're saying is just because battery reason. But the, as far as the Wii U went, that was the worst part I found. Because the battery was only good for like two hours, maybe a little oh, yeah. over. Three. So, and the three, yeah, like you're pushing it, right? So, and I don't know, but six hours on dock, I don't know if anybody would really want it that long on docked. But like I said, as long as it's docked and it's good, then portability, you know you got to take a sacrifice for portability. So mm -hmm. it's it's perfectly fine with me, and I don't know how bad the difference will be. Like, it's going to be like a little choppy looking. I mean, surely, like... surely they're going to downsize the resolution for the portables. I'm sure that will take away a lot of the process, processing power yeah. needed for w when you're on the go. But I, I know Nyko will make some kind of battery pack, you know, that you can take along. Oh, for with sure. Give you double battery life or whatever you need to do, or maybe they'll they'll make a battery pack that kind of mimics the dock. To where yes. it thinks it's being docked and, and you won't lose that processing power. Who that's knows? true too. Eh? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So there is lots of options out there. So I'm still optimistic and I'm still gonna buy it either way. Whether I'd be disappointed with it because I bought the Wii U and I I rarely use that, but I don't regret buying that. Mm -hmm. so I mean, we, I'll, I'll we, buy it and see what it's all about. We all pretty much expected that it, it wasn't gonna be as powerful. Yeah, I mean, it's not. It's definitely not a next generation console. I mean, the the gimmick of it definitely. You know, it's definitely a uh, a new idea, having yeah, a, a have for sure. portable, uh, taking it with you everywhere, you know, mm. unless you count the Vita, but I, I don't because it didn't work 
this one will yeah. actually work uh, according to the videos. But um, I mean, were were you guys expecting it to be as powerful as Xbox One or PS4? Because I no, I wasn't. I wasn't. No, no way. No. No. If you're expecting that, then you're just setting yourself up for disappointment. Yep. But yeah. like the carry an Xbox like one type like a capability around with that portability. No, that's you're just being crazy. No. Us <laughs> Nintendo fanboys will stay, uh, stand in line at midnight at 8 degrees outside anyway to get it. Yep. I'll All get right. Still. All right. So that does it for news this week. Before we move on, we're going to uh, jump into just a, a special segment created just because of the lack of news this week. That's um, I have one more thing I wanted to talk yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Friday the 13th. Oh, yeah. Friday the 13th, there's a full gameplay trailer released oh, yeah. this week. And, Mike, yeah, I know. Yeah. And besides the fact it's in beta right now on the PC. Yep. And it's all over Twitch. And mm. I don't, and both me and you, Tyler, have been looking forward to this. Yes. Week. It's basically like Evolve. You know, you got one. You got, you got one Evolve, except it's versus, awesome. Versus yeah. seven, seven counselors. Um, I got a little bit of an in-depth view having it, you know, being able to watch it on Twitch. Let's start mm-hmm. with the counselors. They all have different stats. Some of them, that, I mean, there's luck, there's stamina, there's speed. And it seems like everybody's defaulting to the black girl that has a lot of stamina and a lot of speed. So you can run away from Jason. Um, luck, se- luck seems to play a part in finding items that you need. Because basically how it goes is you start out in the camp, um, and it's this area. And hopefully they come up with different areas. Because if it's just going to be one area, it's going to get real boring real fast. Yeah. And so you go crawling into the houses, you know, and you, you, you try to find stuff to start the car. So you're looking for, you know, keys, battery, gas. <clears throat> I can't remember what the other what the other thing is, but also there are there are weapons in the game. But there there are some things you're really looking for, like a gun, um, a uh, pocket knife, pocket knife in particular, because if you get if you get grabbed by Jason, you can um, um, shank him in the in the neck with a pocket knife, and he'll let go of you and get away. But also that takes all of his abilities that are building up, and he has four abilities, and la- like rage. Um, the ability to to warp to different areas, the ability to you know kind of, it's it's different kind of warp. There's like four different abilities, but basically and detect people. Mm-hmm. Now he has a hard time detecting people inside of a building, but outside of a building he can detect you and come right up on you. And there's this move you can do. It's called like like warp grip, where you warp to the person and if you hit the button fast enough, you just gra- grab them by the back back of the neck and they're dead. Unless they have a knife or somebody has a gun pointed at them and shoots them before the animation is over. Oh. Um, so apparently, you, you know, the deal is, is the counselors, they, they get they get the, the car ready and everybody jumps in the car. And then you have to go and go and go and go. And there's a way that Jason can warp in front of the car. Now, if he warps in front of the car, he stuns the car and everybody's screwed. At least one person gets killed, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But if you manage to have managed to you know weave by him and get through, you get to this fog and it's all over. You win. If he kills everybody, you lose. So uh, um, it, it looks really interesting and it looks like a lot better um, game than Evolve. And uh, I hope that they you know continue to build on this and you know take it uh, down. Okay. <laughs> I think you could have held wow. that in. No, yeah. Yeah. He That's tried to hold on that one. Damn it, Mike. Right. I tried. I'm sorry. Oh, I bet. God. That's going to have to be it. Cla- classing it up for Christmas. Everybody. No, we're going to leave it in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let them know the real mic. <laughs> yep. We're going to class it up for Christmas. And uh, so, all right. Uh, but, yeah, definitely a game I'm looking forward to, too. Uh, you, know, you and I have talked a lot about this, and it, it just seems like a game that's a lot of fun. And yeah. if it's done so, right. You said it's in the beta. None of you guys yes. got in on the beta, eh? No. No, because I don't really, I mean, besides Civilization and City Skylines, I really don't play anything on my laptop. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's it'll, just, it's a PC-only beta, right? Instantly. It's a PC-only beta, Mike? Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Um, speaking of betas, by the way, uh, if you haven't signed up yet um, for Sea of Thieves and you have any interest in it, go and yeah. sign up for that. Oh. Because they've they have their alpha is going on right now. Yep. Oh, really? And their beta is coming up very soon. Mm-hmm. I really hope that game's successful. I'm so excited it, for that it, game. It, yep. it, it, it's such a. It reminds me of. Do you guys remember when they announced Pirates of the Caribbean online? 
Uh, yes. And yes. I would, yeah, I would no, it was such a fantastic. Right? I, it, it's ex, it's almost exactly like Sea of Thieves, except as you know, in the Pirates universe, and is actually very realistic lo- looking. Mm-hmm. And they they canceled it. I think that Disney Studio uh, actually closed down uh, before mm-hmm. they finished the game. But mm-hmm. uh, Sea of Thieves is going to fill in that gap for me. There was also. Yeah, no. yeah. I was a big fan of Sid Meier's Pirates. I love to play the hell oh, out of yeah. the game. I wish they make it backwards compatible on, on Xbox, but they won't because the game was actually backwards compatible on the 360. So that would have to make it double backwards compatible. Yeah. Like how, you know, and then we're getting into domain right. and stuff, and it's hurting my brain. Yeah. Um, but there was a couple of pirate MMORPGs that came out, and the first one that came out, it did, I don't know what they did, but they just blundered it and it didn't end up working out very long before another company took it over and then it sank so yeah, yeah. so that that is out there though I, and I think for our, our podcast like it's a great opportunity to connect with members of our community that game so if you're into Sea Thieves it would be a great opportunity to jump in play together get to know each other a little bit oh yeah it would be a uh, fun one to so share is yeah. alpha, for people to watch too for is right? alpha yes. going to be like on Xbox One or it it was, I believe. If it's still going, I think it's still going on. I know they're giving out keys for it, and I didn't get one. I'm I am signed up on their thing, so I'm hoping to get a key for the beta mm-hmm. to go and play that. But I think that game's coming out in like February or March. I really That's do. Soon. I yeah. do, I, and I could be totally wrong on that. <clears throat> they could they could completely cuphead that thing and make it like 2019. <laughs> but game. but uh. I think that game's coming out sooner than later. I think they're close, and I think it's we're looking at like you know February, March, April range for that game. So uh, I'm really hoping that's the case anyway because that game looks super fun. It looks like a great game to connect with members of our community. So hoping, uh, hoping we see more of that soon. But uh, now we're going to move on to uh, our wish list for 2017. And our wish list, we're going to go in round robin format. Uh, that can be anything from just something you want to see from a game or something you want to see from a console, some new innovation we want, anything like that. So let's start with Eugene. What do you, what's your first one that you throw out as a wish list for 2017? Mm, I, I mean, I'm going to piggyback off of the Nintendo switch. Okay. I really want the Nintendo switch to be successful and not just, for, mm-hmm. not just, Nintendo has a minimalistic almost approach to gaming consoles now. They, they they might have some huge gimmick, but really their their games and their network doesn't doesn't impress anybody. No, uh, I was just trying to play. Uh, me and my girlfriend usually play Mario Kart on the weekends, and recently yeah. the network. Uh, and it's it's an awesome game, and usually we we get in, get online with people and play people from Japan and Canada and Mexico. Mm-hmm. But recently, the last couple of weeks. Uh, we can't connect with anybody, and it's because of the online infrastructure. It, it just doesn't work. Uh, I mean, I can't add Graham on on my friends list very easily to where I can play with him and see when he's online because no one uses a Nintendo for that functionality. So I want yeah. I want Nintendo to fix their network, and we we kind of see it with uh, Super Mario Run. But really, whenever they make a network feature, it's really uh, specific to games. So like Mario mm-hmm. Kart. You add somebody to your friends list with the code, um, you see them on Mario Kart. And the same thing with Super Mario Run. You add mm, the friend code, you, okay. see all their, you see all their information with Super Mario Run. So there's not, it's not a holistic, uh, everything's networked uh, together where we can see what everyone's playing, and see what's going on, see their username, see how many Nintendo trophies they have, any of that. Um, and just a dedicated network too. I mean, they open up uh, servers for games and they'll close them down in less than two years. Hmm. Um, they just shut. They shut down uh, a few months ago uh, on Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U. Uh, the Mario Kart TV, which is w- one of the greatest features, where hmm. you could go online and, and see what people are doing in races and everything. Uh, so I, I want Nintendo Switch's infrastructure to work. I want Nintendo to be successful this year. I want them to pull. I want them to uh, come out of the hole that they've dug themselves. Uh, in the yep. last last few uh, iterations of their console. Sure. Um, other than that, th- that's not too much. Uh, uh, not not too nothing too too much excited about in 2017. There's not even that many games I'm excited about except for Breath of the Wild and maybe Red Dead. All right, uh, Mike, let's go to you next. What uh, what's on your wish list? Oh, Red Dead Two to have the multiplayer that GTA Five has. Oh my God, 
I will never do anything ever again. You can take me <laughs> off Tinder and everything else. You know, call it a day. You mispronounced Grinder. Uh, you two yeah. really. <laughs> you two, you got to jump on that, 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 that bandwagon. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, yeah, so that that will be lost with that one. If, if they if, yeah. when it comes out and it's as good as GTA, forget it. It's all over for me. Yeah. All right. I like I like the Wild West stuff. And, oh, for sure. And Graham, let's go to you. What? Okay, what you mine is this is pretty much wishful thinking. I haven't heard any kind of hint of this ever coming out or coming out, but I would love to hear this coming out. What a spotlight on Grinder. And next, you're all about Grinder. Oh, next, come on now. A next gen <laughs> Simpsons game. That's what I want to see. Next gen Simpsons game. Okay. You've got tons of characters. You got tons of different towns and districts, and you shouldn't have no shortage of story ideas. And like South Park has been such a hit with people, and people love it. Even I don't even know Family Guy has a game, but that's another one too. I'm they sure do. They, have, they have a few games. Yeah. So Family Guy had, Family Guy had that game that came out in like 2012 ish. Um, Family Guy, like Welcome to the Multiverse, or something like that. Yeah, there's that. Yeah. I forgot about that even. Yep. What system was that? 360? That was 360, 360 yep. Yeah. Got horrible reviews. Yeah. yeah I did. played it, though. It was, it was all right. I mean, what but if, yeah, to like, your point, what if they made, like, a South Park, uh, you know, style Simpsons game, like yeah, an RPG cool. almost? I don't know if you guys know about this or not, but back on the PC, way back when, there was, um, even before it was on, on the internet, you know, like, kind of like Doom, where you hooked up with your friends and stuff, there was a South Park multiplayer game called... Uh, I don't remember what it actually what it's called, but basically you guys were on carts, carts, and you had uh, um, snowballs. You had all kinds of ammo you could pick up. It was like just like a massive. It was like a, you know, a multiplayer uh, um, Mario Kart, and you sure. go around and, South you Park know, Rally. Yeah. Yeah. South Park Rally. That's it. Yep. That was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. So, Grant, where would you like to see a game like that go? Would you like to take it, see the same, the same spirit as like Stick of Truth? Where it's that type of story, that type of game, or keep it, you know, kind of that side-scrolling type thing? You know, no, I'd like to see, like, an open-world kind of thing, where okay. you, you go around different parts of the town. And, like, they've had lots of games that came up from the GameCube, which they hit some right notes in places. Sure. So I'd like to see, like, a mass combination of that and just bring it to, like, the next-gen level of, like just like amount of content and stuff like that okay. so no i would love to to hear something like that but i don't know if it's going to happen but i'm sure the fan base is there like me alone i oh, will definitely. buy that yeah like there's tons of people things been around for what 28 years or something since yeah. it's been going Long time. oh yeah so yeah that's what i would love to hear so awesome um for me, I just have a couple. I want to drop one uh, uh, very quickly. I just want to piggyback on what Mike said. Like, if you put out Red Dead Two with online multiplayer, the same with the same uh, just scope as GTA Five, that's going to be the greatest thing ever. And I'm hoping they do that. I'm hoping they bring that to the game. Um, you guys have already touched on Switch, so I don't want to hit on that, but. I just want, my wish list is that Microsoft delivers on what they're promising Scorpio to be. I want to see them deliver a year from now. I want to feel like I'm holding the most powerful gaming console ever made. Yeah. And if they go with what they're saying, it will be. That's what I'm saying. I want them to to actually deliver on what they're promising. I want them to put all the demons from 2013 to bed. (laughs) And be done with it. Yeah. And just come out swinging and make this a real, like, real competition in next gen. Because when it comes to, like, being able to do everything on a console, I prefer Xbox. But when it comes to, like, how games perform on a console, you know, there's really not much place to argue that the PlayStation 4 performs better. Uh Mm-hmm. It just does. And I want to see, and I'm not because I'm an Xbox fan, but because I just want to see good competition. I want to see them deliver on what they're promising and deliver a powerful gaming machine that a company like Microsoft's capable of doing that pushes this industry forward. And that's what I want to see. I want to feel like one year from now, I'm holding the most powerful gaming machine ever made. And, well, you I'm know, they made a statement. 
if they don't do it, they're going to really, really hurt themselves. Like, yeah. Like me and you, like personally, will be upset at it. I'm sure everyone else will be because yeah. you've said this now and everyone's praising you for it and saying this. So they have to. Because you know, Xbox, or I'm um, not, not Xbox, um, E3 is, Microsoft's E3 is going to be all about Scorpio. Yeah. And what it can do. We'll probably see a little Halo 6. Big some, some other things. We'll see some Forza Motorsport 7. We'll see some of that stuff, but it's mostly in a little bit of VR, but it's going to be tied into Scorpio. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. So that's where we're really going to get the selling point. And hopefully, you know, they've learned their lessons from 2013. And I, I trust they have because Phil Spencer's in charge now and, and the man just kind of does everything right. Um, it's not Don Matrick talking about TV, 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 and then Call of Duty and, you know, whatever. Um, I think we're going to see a really compelling argument for. For Scorpio next year, I just hope they actually deliver on what they're promising. And and if they do, I'm gonna be a pretty happy guy here. What do you now. what do you think the price point will be for the I I think honestly God, I think it's gonna be three ninety nine. And I think at most it's gonna be four ninety nine. I think you're I think you're uh I don't think it'll be that expensive. I think three ninety nine is a yep. great price point. I mean, we, we can't say two ninety nine. That that's just unrealistic. No, they a can't. A lot of people, they a can't. lot of people are saying that, and that they they can't afford no it. No way. But Not they're going to different I, iterations too, right? So I is think it the cheapest one you're I, talking I about. I think if they come in, if they come in three ninety nine with a one terabyte hard drive, three ninety nine with a one terabyte hard drive, that is a mic drop moment at E three, and they win E three. Done. I, I really think yeah, so. Unless, what's that? So, yeah, but they still have to make money on it. Three ninety nine. No, they we'll don't. Right. They don't though, because Microsoft has like eighty billion dollars legit, like off in some offshore account that they can't yeah, spend. Then what's the point? Because they want to get market penetration. They want to get people penetration. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, seriously you're, though, you're, you're right. Play, PlayStation Four is still leading, leading the yep. race, and like. I, I don't know if you like with the latest news report that they sold 50 million consoles or you know sent out 50 million consoles. The the PlayStation 4 is it's probably going to break 100 million, almost guaranteed by the end of its life cycle. Yep. It's going to break 100 million. It's not going to beat out PlayStation 2, um, but 100 million, even 50 million for a console cycle. Cycle. I mean that's that's fantastic. So I mean they both did 80 last time. Yeah, so, Xbox Xbox has got to get caught up. I mean, they're at like what 25, 30 million probably. Probably about, probably about thirty. Probably. And I mean, the, they the key numbers, the key so. isn't even to catch up. The key is by the end of the cycle to be outpacing them, right? And to be the more popular one. And I think that they they don't have to make money on this. Like Microsoft's got so much money in the bank that they literally can't spend because of the taxes they'd have to pay on it if they brought it back to the U.S. And invested in their own, you know, research, development, whatever. Like, it's just sitting in these offshore accounts and they need to spend it rather than transfer it and, and, and invest it. So they they can take the losses. That's why they spent, like, whatever billion dollars they spent on Mojang, you know. Um, it's why they did all that. And same thing here. They can afford to take the loss. Sony can't. Mm-hmm. Like, PlayStation is Sony's most profitable division. At this point. Mm-hmm. So they can't afford to take the loss on anything PlayStation. But Microsoft can because because Xbox is not the, the the flag bearer for profit for for Microsoft. Windows is. Right. So that that's the difference, and that's why Microsoft can take that hit. But the thing is, like Microsoft knows Xbox is the brand name everybody knows. Right, and everybody identifies with. Mm-hmm. So if you get that, you got to get that into people's homes. So you, if you come out at three ninety nine and you take even a, a slight hit on that thing, that's a whole different ball game going forward. I, I could see them going four ninety nine on it, but I really hope they come in at three, three ninety nine. What do you guys think? I think you're right. Three ninety nine is the perfect price. Well, any anything more than that, will you'll you'll lose your audience. Yep. I mean, three ninety nine is pushing lowest. it. Lowest model at three ninety nine, and then if you want bigger hard drive or mm. maybe mm. I, I don't know what else they'll offer, but yeah, for the lowest one at three ninety nine, I think that's fair price too. Mm. Mike, what do you think? What do you think yeah, they come in at? The base model three ninety nine. Okay, 
And I, and I think that's fair because you know what? I can easily make the argument to anybody that's listening to the show that it's a better deal to go out and buy an external hard drive and plug it in. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. Yeah, I, I bought a three terabyte external hard drive a month ago for like forty dollars. Yep. Yep. So if you get a five hundred gig at three ninety nine, don't feel like you lost out on anything. No. Because you can go buy that external hard drive, you know, three terabytes, like you said, for forty bucks, and you're set. You're done. Yeah. No. I mean, sure. one terabyte. One terabyte is almost the standard now uh, with gaming. It is. I it, mean, I have I have the three terabyte hooked up in my five hundred gigabyte Xbox One, and it's plenty. But on my PS4, which I cannot hook up an external hard drive up to, I, I'm always having to delete games. And I hate deleting games I know on I my console. I, I always want them available. Yep. But five, 500 gigabytes is just not enough anymore. No, no. So their, their, minim, their minimal is going to be a one terabyte. I mean, they'll really surprise us if they just make the two terabyte a standard, which I, I'm going to go and they call They might, it. you know. If you're I'm going to go that and big. call it that the Xbox Scorpio will launch with two terabytes minimum. And I, I don't think there'll be other yeah. iterations. I think it'll just be one. They're not going to try to confuse people or throw people off that, oh, the more expensive one's $500. I think they're going to just make one at one price point with a two, two terabyte hard drive. So that's where I disagree. I think they'll come out with the different ones because they did with 1S and it was successful. Well, another so thing I was going to say, too, is there well, I mean, a chance the, that they'll release one with not six teraflops? Would be like a cheaper version. No, no, no zero all, chance all of that. No, that's the there's zero, thing. zero chance of that. But well, so if, well, you, the only, if the only difference is hard drive space, then like you guys yeah. are saying, like you can just have an external hard drive. So what's stopping people? What's going to persuade people to not get because, the cheapest version? Well, and that's what I was going to say. But here's the thing. Like, funny when, enough. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Eugene, when, when, they go. Launch, when they launch the Xbox One S. They only had one version available, which was the two terabyte version, yeah, the more, version, the more right, expensive yeah. one. Uh, and then they later released the, the cheaper one yes. for, that everyone wanted to buy. Yep. So I, I really, I really think it's it's going to launch with one. Um, they're going to make a standard for the industry. What what needs to be that? Because in the future, next next console jump. I mean, you, you oh, guys wow. have a dickhead neighbor in Texas wow. who drives yeah. a fucking truck. Uh, sorry for my language, but anyway, yeah. um, it's all right. Um, I said it's I said it's not explicit every week. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've already opened up with that. Yeah, so. but Pandora's box has been opened. They need to set the standard for next generation, which next to I, I'm I'm thinking 2020, 20, 2019, yeah. 2020 next generation ratio console will come out. Uh, I really think PS4 at this E3, they're gonna get their audience and keep their audience after because they're gonna show off the Scorpio and the official name and everything at E3. Yeah. PlayStation PlayStation's got to show a hint. At PS5, some kind of code name. Something. I don't think they will. I really they, don't. They, I I think uh, they have to. I mean, they, they cannot make Here's... another mistake like the PS4 Pro. The, so so Xbox. Let me just finish this yep. one little. Yep. Xbox has got to set the standard for next generation because games next generation are going to be like a hundred gigabytes in size. I mean, they've got to mm-hmm. be. For oh, the, I agree. The, the 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 power of consoles that are coming in the yep. future. So. All right, so a couple of things. One on the on the size of the hard drive, I think we'll see two versions. I think we'll see a one terabyte and a two. I, I don't think we'll see a five hundred gig. We might, but I doubt it. Just because when you're talking about these games in four K and you're talking about the resolution you're talking about, you're. I mean, these games are gonna be big. So, you're. Uh, I think one terabyte's the minimum we can go with. I think we'll see a one terabyte at three ninety nine and a two terabyte at four ninety nine. Um, you're better off finding the one at three and getting the external hard drive and just being done. But uh, as for Sony, I don't think we're going to see anything PS5 related. I don't think we're going to see a damn thing because I think Sony, and this is, you know, eventually it might be a wake up call to them, but I think they've gotten more and more and more arrogant as we've gone. And I think the PS4 Pro is an example of that. That they're so far ahead that they can put up something with such minimal upgrades. Very arrogant. Yeah, that's going to be dwarfed a year from now, and celebrate it. I I think they've they've become so arrogant and with their lead that they become complacent. I don't think we're going to see anything PS Five related. And I don't think we're going to see anything until until they see the damage from the Scorpio sales, and then we'll see the reaction. So twenty eighteen. Yep, twenty eighteen E three. I think we'll see something PS Five related. Yep. I think you're right. Anything else on that, guys? No. Nope. All right, that's going to do it for our news and our uh, wishlist segment this week.
Graham, what uh, can we get new in stores this week? I know there's not much, but is there anything we can get? Well, for us, seeing we're console gamers, there is nada. But we do have PC gamers out there, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners are PC gamers, and I'm kind of dwindling on the PC gamer edge. Uh, but looks like the slowdown of gaming releases is in full swing to end the year, which is not unexpected. But like I said, PC gamers still find that they can pick up some new releases going into the new year. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's get things going. Releasing December 26th, we have Drop Zone. We also have Blanco, Delicious, Emily's Hopes and Fears, uh, Wanderer, The Rebirth, D.E.D. Don't ask me what it stands for. Yeah. And... <laughs> yeah. And... Brain, <laughs> brain booster. And like I said, all these games are all on PC and they're all available on the day after Christmas. That's the twenty six. They all sound horrible. Yeah, they do sound horrible. But eh, they're still making games and trying to release and trying to make some money. Yeah. Now, for December twenty seventh, the standalone new release for that day is Crypt of the Serp- Serpent King, and that's another PC only release. And. To end the week off, we have three new releases, and guess what? They're on PC as well. Those are HBR, another thing, don't ask me what the, the acronym is for, if it is Hoover. an acronym. Hoover yeah. Vacuum Hoover. The Simulator. Yeah. There you go. And also we have Mana Storm, Champions of Nar, and Leap Up to, or Leap Up No Jutsu. <laughs> don't ask. I just say. God, what an ass. And there's that dick <laughs> These are all. Only that's not. Street. That's not a neighbor. That's the main street. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's it. Sorry Quiet about that. Boys on the girls. console front. Yeah, we apologize for their street. Yeah. This is Texas. <laughs> God damn it! I can drive my yeah. Harley down the street anytime I want. He's probably got like, guns in the air. He's probably got guns mounted on it. So. Texas. Uh, this is fucking Trump's country now. Damn yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Get so. out nuclear weapons. So that's it, Graham. That's it. That's it. All right. So, Mike, oh, wow. I know, I know, we have better news on the deals front with holiday sales. So, what can we save our money on? Well, dude, there is actually a hell of a lot. So, I'm going to skim over a lot of it. Sure. Because we, we could be here for you know the next thirty minutes and be listing off everything that's available. I'm going to start with the games with gold for January. January 1st through the 30, 31st on Xbox One is Van Helsing Death Trap, World of Van Helsing Death Trap. So that will be free to play. One of the ones that I am extremely excited about because I suck at them but like them is uh, the 2D Fighter Killer Instinct Season 2 Ultra Edition, uh. which will have all the fighters and all the arenas and everything like that you know, for free. From January 16th to February 15th on Xbox One. On the 360, the 1st to the 15th, you'll have The Cave. I've heard nothing but good things about this. Um, I thought I had this game, but apparently I do not. So, uh, you know, definitely get that one. Um, like I said, I've heard nothing but rave reviews. So, And the last one, which you have to get, is Raymond or- Origins. It'll be free from January 16th to the 31st on uh, the 360, and the, both of those are backwards compatible. So, with that being said, let's go to the list of deals that are available right now. Um, as Tyler said earlier, um, Peggle is on sale today. It's the it's a day deal. And so is Raymond Legends for $6.60. That's just today only. Yesterday was um, um, Life is Strange for 5 bucks, but that was oh, yesterday, wow. and it doesn't exist anymore. So, let's see here. The arcade three and one pack is fifty percent off. I think it's just a couple bucks. Um, it's got Dig Dug, uh, Pac Man, and uh, Galaga. So that's definitely worth picking up. Um, Battle. You know what? I got to be honest with you guys. Um, a lot of the digital deals going on right now for the week are not all that great. You can search out Amazon digital deals and CD keys and stuff like that and get much better deals than what's what's going on. Like Battlefield 1 is 25% off right now. That's not bad. That's not bad. Um, but like uh, um, you know, a lot of these a lot of these are just not that great. Like uh, Dark Souls on here, Dark Souls 3 is only 40% off where you can, you know, I mean 50% off where you can just go over to Target and pick it up for 20 bucks or you know, there's another place had it for 9.99 stuff like that. So I mean, it's really not all that great. 
Um, they got all the EA Sports NHL 17s on sale for 50% off. Um, Final Fantasy 15 is only 25% off here, where you can get it much cheaper on Amazon, even Amazon uh-huh. and, uh, digital version on there, you know, even better. So uh, Forza Horizon 3, which you can, once again, get better through uh, um, Best Buy and stuff like that, is 25% off. Um, so, you know, there's not, of course, our, our, our usual Grand Theft Auto is 50% off, so that's on there as well. Um, Lego Marvel Super Heroes, though, is a whopping 5 bucks. That's definitely worth picking up right now. Um, what I've heard people say about Mafia uh, 3 it's not worth picking up for more than like ten bucks, and it's only thirty-five percent off right now on Xbox Live. Um, Mountain Blade Warband though is thirty-three percent off. That's actually a, looks like a really, really, really fun game. Oxen Free is fifty percent off. It's not bad at all. Uh, Recore is fifty percent off. It's twenty bucks right now. However, we get into Battlefront, the Deluxe Edition. Um, and the regular one, they're 50% off each. The Star Wars, um, the, the Season Pass is 35% off at $19.59. And the Ultimate Edition is 25% off. Um, unfortunately, the Elder Scrolls Skyrim Special Edition this time around is only 33% off, so it's not the $30 that it was before. Um, let's see here. Uh, Titanfall 2 is 50% off. Um, it's still cheaper on Amazon via digital code. Um and then that's pretty much it. I mean, there, there are a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of deals this week. You know, you go to Major Nelson's blog at MajorNelson.com, and you can see them all. But, you know, there's nothing that, that really goes wow to me. You know, all these other deals, you know, if you're looking for something specific, you'll find it better someplace else so yeah. far. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's a lot of the daily deals that are really standing out. Yeah. So you yeah, just got to check back like, every day. Yeah. Even your local yeah. stores, there's... There's lots of deals to be had. Oh yeah, like I think yep. Target right now is buy one get one fifty percent off, right? On games. Yep. Yeah, I believe so. And, yeah, and last week I think Best Buy wasn't it buy two get one free with mm-hmm. something like that. Yep. Even cheaper with Gamers Club. So yep. yeah, yeah, retailers are definitely uh, yep. stepping up. I wish uh, if I didn't have Life is Strange already, like it's to- it was totally worth five dollars yesterday. If you yeah, guys yeah. never played it, if you guys like uh, those type of uh, uh, text based. Story driven mm. games like that, sure. walking right. simulators almost. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, but check check the daily deals because a lot of good stuff there. Mm. Um, but you got to check it every day. So, yep. no, so, no way to get you any sort of list on that. You yep. just got to check back every day and see what's there. Um, but I think that's where you're going to find your best stuff. So, right. All right. Let's so move. I'm going to pass through yeah. the, the PlayStation. Yeah. Right now. Now, yeah. Yeah. PlayStation not... flash sale today. Yes. Yeah. Well, I. Why is everybody going to keep mentioning that? Um, <laughs> so with, um, January, um, uh, free games for PlayStation, it is not out yet. However, yep. there is a lot of buzz that Titanfall will be one of the, one of the, um, ones for PS4. Now, I don't know about this because that would mean it would have to make a port for it and stuff like that. No, but I, don't I don't see, see that. that happening no. at, all. at all. No. And this has been reported by... Um, a few different websites, and they're probably just churning off of each other. But you know, I, I don't, I don't buy that one at all. Um, Gravity Rush Two, quite a possibility. Um, and uh, the third one is Ratchet and Clank. So, and I can believe that one as well. But as far as Titanfall goes, no, nah, that's that's not happening. So, here we go. We are in week three of the holiday sale for the PS4. Um, they pretty much ha- are doing the same thing as um, Xbox. However, they have a couple of uh, prices that are a little bit better. Like uh, um, the, the the standalone uh, Battlefront is is thirty percent off at thirteen ninety nine. So if you have PS four, that's a really good price for that. Um, let's see here. The deluxe edition is twenty ninety nine. Bloodborne, however, is a whole ten bucks right now. That is definitely worth picking up if you haven't. By now, um, Oxen Free is nine ninety nine on that one. Um, beyond that, I mean, the, the, I, I'm actually pretty disappointed by the prices for these digital games, considering all of the stuff that I, I've been picking up coming out of Best Buy and, and stuff like that, that. That apparently they don't think anybody ever, you know, gets on the internet or looks or anything like that. Because, you know, if that was the case, then, you know they would probably step their game up a little bit more on what's, uh, 
you know, what's going on, you know. And we're going to get into the flash sale in a second here. So, uh, as soon as it loads up. Anyways, what do you what do you guys think? I mean, do you guys think that these, these prices are, are, are where they should be? I think, think they're they pretty should... weak. It's yeah. pretty weak. Yeah. Usually, you, especially, and I know you're about to talk about the flash sale, but PlayStation usually has a lot better deals on their holiday sale. Yeah, yeah even even Xbox, but I, I think yeah. they're 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 focusing too much on uh-huh. AAA titles. You yeah. know, yes. where you save twenty dollars here, fifteen dollars here. Yeah. We don't care about that. We already got them. We we got better yeah. deals on Black Friday on those. Yeah. Like yeah. show us show us the games like you know like uh, Peggle Two. You know, was a lot yeah. Shadowfly Xbox One, and it's a highly addictive game and totally worth the the four dollars or whatever it was. Yeah. For that. Uh, you know, show us show us more titles, smaller titles, yeah. where I only have to whip out like four dollars, five dollars on. Exactly. Because yeah. that, that's where I spend the money on these flash sales and everything. Or yeah. I'm not going to spend whip out forty dollars. I want to buy a bunch of games for three, three fifty. Yeah. You know, five dollars a piece, less than ten dollars. So yeah, not, well, not great deals at all. Yeah, and I'm looking at the flash sale right now on on the PlayStation Store, and they got uh, the day one edition of Final Fantasy for thirty nine right now, which is meh, not whatever. Bad. I mean, there's a lot of places that have it for 32 and 36. Um, yep. Skyrim is 40 bucks. That's not great. You can still get it for 30, for 30 all over the place. Madden is 50% off at 29.99. Okay. So is FIFA 17. Um, Titanfall is also 50% off at 29.99. That's 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 worth it. You know, um, they have Steep on sale for 33%. But I mean, you know, it's just for whatever reason they're 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 not trying to compete with the competition. I guess they think everybody's just going to, you know. Well, I think part of it's you paying premium for getting it digitally and not having to go to a store. Well, um, but, I'm, but I'm telling you, like, Amazon's actually get, getting into the digital digital game now. Right. So, no, I agree. You know, um, you can just look on Amazon first or CD Keys. CD Keys always has good mm-hmm. deals, and they're legit. And, you know, so, I mean, like, they got Dishonored 2 on sale for, for 40 bucks. It's like the game's been out forever, you know. Um, yep. They could do a little bit better than that. So, sure. I'm not really excited by the flash deals or the my or the Xbox deals for this week. So we're gonna mm-hmm. we're gonna graduate into the Xbox deals that are going on out there right now. Okay, so we already went over uh, Raymond Legends and Peggle Two for six sixty and three seventy five piece. Um, I don't know why, but Saints Row Metro Double Pack is eleven dollars. Countdown. It's a countdown daily deal, even though it wasn't listed. So if you want to get it, get it now. Um, this is not a bad one at all. Um, Xbox One S, uh, 500 gigabyte with an extra controller or a game plus one year of gold for 249 free shipping. Hmm. That's not bad at all. Nope. Doom used via GameFly is 12.99. That's not bad at all. It's pretty good. Um, EA Access in the UK is uh, 17.49 via Amazon right now. So that's not bad. That's like twenty bucks. Our our uh, our stuff. Uh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate <laughs> is <laughs> is eleven dollars and ninety nine cents with GCU via Best Buy right now, and then they have it on digital for twenty bucks. I mean that that's you know I mean come on. So Target plus Cartwheel plus Red Card five hundred gigabyte X One S plus thirty dollar um, gift card for two hundred dollars. So you're basically getting it for for a buck seventy, you know. Um, digital code. Here we go again. Dead Rising Four, thirty five ninety nine via Newegg. Gears of War Four digital code, twenty seven ninety nine via Newegg. Xbox gift card, um, digital code, email delivery via Newegg, seventy dollars. So you got ten dollars off. That's free money, people. That is free money. Dishonored 2, like I said, be a new egg. Digital code, $29.99. Mortal Kombat XL, digital code. New egg, $17.99. That's $3 yeah. cheaper than was on the PlayStation Store. So that's pretty much what's going on with that right now. I mean, and like I said, that just proved everything I had to say about that. And uh, got a, I don't know if anybody out there likes Trackmania Turbo, but it's on clearance at Target for, for $9.98. What? store in store only and has the VR mode in it. Uh, Wait, say that again? Say what game again? Trackmania Turbo. Okay. <laughs> no no one knows what that is. No, I do. It's actually okay. a pretty cool looking game. 
It's a VR yeah. game. Um, it's it's fairly VR enabled. Is, did you say it's for PS4, Mike, or for PC? Yeah, it's for PS4. Okay, VR yeah, enabled in VR mode. Yes. Everyone sold out of the PSVRs. By the way, I went to GameStop and Best Buy and, and Walmart tonight, and everyone sold out of the VRs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Target's giving you 10% off of a PS4 Slam and Charnet bundle from the 23rd to the 24th. Um, I can never say that this game right. Deus Ex, Dua, whatever it may be. Collector's Edition. Deus. Deus. <laughs> it's it right. 38.91 Amazon.com. Um, right now, they also have a Final Fantasy 15 free holiday pack DLC um, via the PlayStation Store. Here's a great one. Um, Street Fighter Five is twelve ninety nine with new egg code. So, oh, yeah, right. That was a good deal. Yep, pretty much. Uh, there's one year PlayStation Plus, uh, um, US only, uh, forty five ninety nine at CDKeys.com. Um, Final Fantasy uh, fifteen is forty bucks at GameStop right now. Canada, PS4, yes, sir. PS4 hardware upgrade for ninety nine dollars EB Games. Like we, we already talked about this before. You know, to get 12 months of uh, um, PS Plus, double the trade-in on games, and it ends December 22nd. So that was that same, that same monster deal we talked about the other day. XCOM 2 is thirty buck, twenty three ninety nine 99 with GCU at Best Buy right now for the PS4. So that just blows the $40 um, digital co- copies out of the, you know, the bin pretty much. Um, GTA is actually thirty dollars at EB Games, December twenty second only. So if you're listening to this, it's too late. <laughs> um, and then you've got Rainbow Six Siege um, disc, fourteen dollars ninety six cents at the source dot ca. They price match it at uh, Best Buy for thirteen dollars and forty six cents. So with all that being said, I mean, all, all of a sudden, all of these retailers and everything like that are blowing, you know these, these uh, dashboard deals out of the water. So pretty much from here, here on out, if I can, if I find a digital deal on here, I will buy it oh, way over that. So, yeah. you know, and especially, sure. since, especially since uh, Xbox completely screwed over their, uh, their, uh, um, what, what's that deal, Tyler, that, that you get, you got screwed out of this year? You bought some oh, their games. rewards thing? Yeah, yeah. Xbox Live Rewards, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they really tanked that one. So, that being said, you know, there are a lot of good deals out there, and you can find them on um, Xbox, uh, Reddit Xbox One deals and Reddit PS4 deals. They come up pretty fast, and, you know, take advantage of it that way, because I am, like I said, these digital deals so far have been crap. So, with yep. that being said, off to you, Mr. Tyler. All right, well, let's talk about what we've been playing uh, quickly. Let's get through this. Um, I'll go first. I've been playing a little bit of Battlefield 1. A little bit of Titanfall 2, um, some NHL, and some uh, Forza whoa, 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 Horizon whoa, whoa. You 3. You playing NHL without me? Yes. Not very well, but yes. Um, and he some wasn't. I was doing Forza great. Horizon 3. And uh, that's been about it. Mike, how about you? Uh, some NHL, you know, trying to keep you, I don't know, your stats up or whatever. Um, sure. Just ripped open Battlefield 1 today, you know, uh, so far so good. And took advantage of the Battlefront uh, double XP uh, DLC deal going on today. Sure. Only thing that bothered me about that man is is the stupid white screen that's constantly on Battlefront. For whatever reason, it's really bright and it gives me a headache. Yeah. So I had to, I had to exit out of that for a while. But beyond that, yeah. I haven't really been getting any, into anything else. But I'm definitely gonna okay. be playing some stuff after Christmas. Cool. Uh, Eugene, how about you? Uh, I've actually been playing a little little title called Stardew Valley. On yeah, the I yeah, I can't up, wait uh, for that. Uh, I, pl- I picked it up uh, two days ago, and I really didn't think I, I really didn't. Well, I wasn't interested in it at all, but I-, I looked at it on the PlayStation Store and watched the trailer, and it's a fantastic game, fantastic little indie game. Um, it-, it reminds me a lot of Harvest Moon and Animal Crossing. If you guys, so if you guys like the old Harvest Moon game yes, for SNES. Yes. And uh, Animal Crossing, it's very mm-hmm. reminiscent of that. It's a fantastic game. It, it, it's after a couple hours, uh, I, I, I was kind of slow at the beginning, but mm-hmm. after getting the hang of it and the, the mechanics, I, I love it. So check out that game. And can you guys guess the other game I've also been playing this week? 
Final Fantasy 15. You're was right, it? Graham. I yes. was in your a few hours in Final Fantasy 15, so still love that game. Highly recommend it. If you haven't gotten it, it's forty dollars, right? Uh, on the on the deals, I think at GameStop it's forty dollars. So yeah, pick that up. That's twenty dollars off, thirty three percent off. But that's what I've been playing. All right, All right. Graham, over you. Well, like I was saying, I traveled, so I brought my uh, 3DS with me. Mm-hmm. I played Mario Kart 7 with local multiplayer, and I first time I ever played it. Great experience, so much fun, great game. Uh, also, I was playing Pokemon uh, Sun and Moon, well, Pokemon Moon. And today I went to go play it, and it said my save data is corrupt. Oh, so you saved in a Pokestop, apparently. Yeah, I'm not sure what I did, but if if I don't get it back, I don't know if I'm going to start playing it again. I might just... Wow. How many hours did you have into it? I had probably a good 25, maybe 30. That is not like Nintendo. Um, their their games are usually glitch-free, but I, I heard about that glitch uh, on release. A lot of people were playing it, and they would save in a certain spot, and, and doing that causes the game to crash, and their save do- uh, data to <laughs> delete. So it sounds you know, like that's what happened with you. I know, and the date was so old on those forums that I figured that it was fixed by now, but apparently it's not fixed. So, like I said, this is like pretty discouraging. Mm-hmm. Like all yeah. that time I put in, I really don't feel like putting in all that time again. Oh, right. So I just might say, well, I'm done with it, and I'll just play other games. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's kind of a downer. But uh, yeah, I've been just playing out one, played some Super Mario Run, which is still. F- Fun as hell and a great game, mm-hmm. which yep. sold 50 million games in five days. So wow. it's pretty much on a 10 million per day pace, which is pretty damn good. Hmm. And that that was it for me. All right, awesome. So let's move into uh, discussion slash fan mail. It's all going to be fan mail this week. And <clears throat> first and foremost, let's uh, announce uh, the winner of our Christmas week giveaway, which is our biggest giveaway of the week, or of the season. Let, 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 let's start with the runner-ups first. Okay, we'll start with the runner-ups. That works for me. Eugene, I'll give it to you then. You can go with the runner-ups, and so, when you're done, I'll take the winner. So, surprise, guys, uh, our big Christmas giveaway. We're actually giving away a little gift to the runner-ups as well. So, we pulled these questions off our Facebook page. So, our first runner-up, you will get a $10 Xbox Live code that surprise surprise you guys have to message me on facebook to get so after you guys mm-hmm. get done listening to the show message me on facebook and i will send you your ten dollar xbox live code so our first runner up is drum roll mike thank you sir brian richland and he asked the question was there ever a time in your life that video games helped you through a difficult situation for me, it was two years ago when my mother was battling cancer and passed away. I was such a miserable person having that escape really helped me keep it together. So sorry for your loss, Brian, but I'm glad that video mm-hmm. games helped you through that predicament. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, 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 I've never been in a situation like that, but I'm glad that you had a uh, had video games there for you to escape from that. But what do you guys say? Mike, I know you were talking about this the other night. What, what do you have to say? I can definitely cover this, my friend. I I understand exactly what you're saying. My mother went through a four-year battle with emphysema. And uh, um, at the time, I had a girlfriend who was living with me, and her father wasn't doing so hot either. And it was basically coming down to the end, and I'm sure you understand what I mean by that. And trying to quit smoking at the same time and everything like that. The thing that worked for me was MMORPGs. So me and her, you know, would play uh, World of Warcraft, and it just mattered because there was so much, you know, there were other people in there. It wasn't a lonely experience. You weren't in a world by yourself, and there was other real people around, you know, and you didn't feel so lonely, and, you know, you had goals, you had stuff you wanted to do, you know, leveling up your guy, whatever it may be. And that was a great escape from what was actually going on. It was enough to distract me to the point where I wasn't driving myself insane with what was going on, you know. And I just, you know, I got to tell you that that was definitely, that game and EverQuest 2 were probably the ones that got me through that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for me, nothing nothing quite like that. And obviously, Brian, I uh, feel for you, sorry for your loss. And, and Mike, same. Um you know, it's obviously tough to go through that. And 
Um, but, you know, for me, I went through kind of a transition period in my life, around, like, 2008, 2009. Um, I was living in Boston, had the opportunity to go to to a great school for graduate school, and, you know, had a lot of stuff go down that, that wasn't real good, uh, none of it really I had control of, um, <clears throat> resulted in me having to move halfway across the country and all that stuff, and just a lot of stress and a lot of... Uh, you know, not feeling great and had to, you know, made the decision to eject some people out of my life that weren't very motivated and, and weren't good to be around. Um, but yeah, but, I'm still here. Well, that was, that, <laughs> that was post that. So <laughs> when ejection part two comes around, we'll talk. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but, uh, but anyway, um, but gaming definitely played a part in, uh, in kind of getting through all that. There was a lot of stuff going on. I remember games like Ninja Gaiden 2. Mm -hmm. um, really enjoyed. Um, NHL, which we talk about a lot on the show. And I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing about it, But I am. But, uh, <clears throat> I know. And but, I know um, you guys don't care. I know yep. we don't. Definitely but, don't. But I, I played uh, with with this guy who's like Mike's favorite person in the world, but uh, named Eric, oh, who, this guy. who uh, you know was a good friend at the time and, and, and still is and and just it, re it really helped kind of get through a lot of that stuff and you know no matter what it is whether it's something like really just life changing or it's just you know that, that bump in the road I'm sure we've all had that time where gaming has kind of helped us through it but I want to thank you for that question because that um, you know having been through crappy situations and I know Mike you know better than me but it takes a lot to throw that out there. Yeah, oh, yeah. It does. So sure. um, we want to thank you for that. That's a genuine question. Yeah, that's a genuine question. We want to thank you for that question, and that's why we tried to give as honest an answer as we could. And you were not alone, um, my nope, Not at all. Not at all. So uh, I don't have anything that, um, you know, sorry for your guys' loss, like Tyler yeah. Miller said, but uh, um, really, I, I've never been, I've, I've never had anything like that. You know, I, I could never imagine what that experience is like, like losing a loved one. I don't have many loved ones, but you know, if my, uh, fiance ever passed or, you know, my pregnant fiance or my sister, you know, I'd be devastated, but, uh, so, I, I so can remember. Wait a minute. You got two fiancés. You said your fiance and then your pregnant fiance. <laughs> <laughs> What just one fuck? you know you know what? i'm gonna give him a pass gonna on this you, i'm again. gonna give him oh my god you know, no, that's, that's jerry springer should we call jerry springer and jerry, <laughs> jerry 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 jerry, jerry, jerry. my sister's involved i brought up my I sister i know right <laughs> that's god. Just it's I'm just getting Arkansas, worse guys oh my I mean, god it's getting good so anyway uh I, i've never really but I, I do remember a time in my life uh uh maybe five years ago i, I had an overnight uh job where I worked about yep. 13, 14 hours overnight. And uh, uh, really, when you have a job like that, I, I was overnight for about two to three years. Yeah, it really makes it, it takes an impact mm -hmm. on, on your social life. It takes an impact on your relationships. Uh, and I was, I, I was in my early 20s, and uh, I, I remember that like I used to try to go on dates, and I would actually fall asleep on the date. Yep. And just because I was so exhausted from working this overnight job, because I would try to have a social life with people that, you know, I consider have a normal life. You mm -hmm. know, even my in my closest friends, you know, they would invite me to go out and I would just uh, I, I would be asleep because yeah. the job that I have w was from 7 p.m. till about 8 to 9 to so sometimes 8 10 a.m. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So um, you same know, job, right, Eugene? Yeah, same job. So, yep. you know, uh, it, it's a tiring experience. So. Um, I, I never had that social life. So I turned, it really made me depressed. I was on a lot of antidepressants and, yep. and sleeping medication. And, mm -hmm. and I actually drank a, a lot. I, I used to drink a, a fifth of Heaven Hill vodka, uh, all, almost every night. I mean, it, it was bad. You know, nice. I was just really depressed. Um, but, uh, you know, video games, that that's all I had when I was up in the middle of the night and I'd be drinking, mm -hmm. I'd be playing video games. I'd be playing call of duty I'd be playing some RPGs, which are RPGs mostly what I played, but video games were there for me to get me yeah. through that. You know, when I didn't have my friends were asleep, I didn't have uh, it was hard for me to have a relationship with that job. Uh, I, I had video games to turn to and really uh, keep me entertained and keep me energized. 
without those, uh, who knows what I would have, I probably would have turned drugs or, you know, lo- lost my job. Who, who knows what would happen? I can't imagine. Uh, it was a very depressing yeah. time for me just from that long extended period of time of having that, having that job, um, really took a toll. So, but video games kept me yeah. sane. Yeah. And time. I can, I can back that up because Eugene and I work for the same company and I had the same job. Great company. And it's a great company, but this job, the overnight portion of it, when you get that rotation, is is a bad deal because you're working from 7 p.m. until 8, 9, 10 in the morning or later. And, you know, Mike, I know, you know, you remember those days when I did that. Mm-hmm. Um, it takes a toll on you. It really does, not just physically, but also mentally, psychologically. It does. And so I can identify and... And, and a lot, of, you know, now that you brought it up, Eugene, a lot of games that I played during that time, like, uh, I remember, like, Call of Duty, the first Black Ops was out at that point, and I played a ton of that with people and just had a great time. That was your only time to really um, socialize with people. Yeah, it really was, because when you're at work, like, you gotta be a supervisor, right? And, and you can't really socialize a ton, so... It's really your only time, and and for me, I made the decision. I tried for a while to like flip the schedule, so on my days off, you know, be up during the day, but it just didn't work for me. I couldn't do it. You're exhausted. Yeah, so I just made the decision like I'm just gonna be up at night, and so morning for me was like seven or eight at night. Yeah, on days off, and and you you know you get up and in the morning you go play Call of Duty when people are getting ready to go to bed, Mm -hmm. and it's uh. It's, it's a weird experience, and, and and you're right. I mean, it does bring about, you know, some of that stuff, like depression and, and some of those things, And because it is hard. It really is. And 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 gaming did a lot to bring me through that. I remember playing just a ton of games. I remember, like, that That's that was, like, the best days ever for my achievement score. Yeah. Because I just, you know, racked up the points. But, okay. but, uh, but yeah, I mean, just a lot, a lot of good stuff from... From gaming back then to get me through that so yeah great question um really appreciate that and like i said it takes a lot to share that so really appreciate it um Eugene, what else do you have for us so uh our next question graham i'm sorry do you have any uh times <laughs> uh you're, you're canadian so you don't have any depressing times. yeah you don't have like, just any problems happy for you and just fantastic so no honestly i've never really had a point where i needed video games to get me through a really hard time but I definitely see how it can help other people through it. And I definitely respect it and have an appreciation for people find that for like a release or anything, get them through a hard time. Yeah. Like even anything, don't even have to be video games, but sometimes people just need that one thing to help them Some get kind of escape. the hardest time. Yeah. And like I said, I appreciate that. And another good thing too is about playing online is when you move away from friends, because like I used to move around a lot. I finally don't move around as much as I did, but like uh, video game was a, a way to keep in touch and yes. get on like Xbox Live parties and talk to each other and see where they are in life and how things are doing. So to me, like that's that's what I go to video games think about the social part of it, about oh, yeah. staying in touch with friends, even though I've kind of fell off with them, but mm-hmm. it did work for a while. So yeah, I definitely do have the appreciation for it. All right, so very good. So next, so uh, like we said, uh, message me, Brian, on Facebook, and I will send you your Xbox code. So next runner-up comes from Stephen Wiseman. Stephen asks, new listener here, I was listening to you guys while playing Kerbal Space Program and quite enjoyed it. Thank you, Stephen. Anyways, my question is, what's a game you'd almost rather watch somebody play than play yourself? For me, it's Kerbal Space Program, which I've heard is a great game. <laughs> I love playing it, but I love watching people who are more more creative than me build rockets and space stations. So mm-hmm. I think we're almost all in a consensus here that games that require a lot of time and creativity, it's a lot more fun to watch. And for me, yeah, it, it's Minecraft. I, I cannot stand Minecraft. And I, I understand the game. I understand the concept. Mm-hmm. But really, I, I can't find myself investing that time into it. And, and what people yeah. do online is amazing. The people that actually spend yes. the time and creating Amazing, levels you're right. and, and you know making images in the sky, huge images. Like I've seen like entire entire Zelda maps 
recreated in Minecraft. Like the Ocarina, yeah, somebody one. made like the Ocarina of Time yep. map yeah. in, in, in Minecraft, and they spent like a year and a half on it. Mm-hmm. And, and built Hyrule Castle, and everything's detailed. Every, all the measurements are exact. I, I I can't do that. I don't have the creativity. But I, I would love. I love watching people. I, I act like I I will do it all the time, but I really don't. But when I do watch YouTube videos, uh, I, I watch the Minecraft videos where people are very they're they're into the game. They put hours into the game. They play along with friends, and they're in the deepest depths of the earth, and, mm-hmm. and playing yeah. Minecraft, and it, it just looks fantastic. But I can't get into it. I'm, I'm first of all, I'm not that creative, and then two, the the time you have to put into it to really do amazing things in that game, it, it requires a lot of time. So that that's the one yeah. answer for me. Okay, yeah. I'll go next because mine is the mm. exact same answer: Minecraft. Because mm-hmm. I've watched many people play, it, especially my nephews and stuff like that, and I've tried it a few times, but I just cannot get into the digging constantly. And then I just learned you can go in creative mode, but then it's no, I can't get into it. Like, it's nice to play with them and like, okay, we're doing this together. But if it was up to me, I would not be playing it. I'd rather watch them. And I have watched people on YouTube like making stuff, and the creativity is crazy. The fact that they make a real working guitar was awesome, and like a printer. Like yeah. I went and searched like the top ten. So it's so cool. Like even like the redstone, you're pretty much being like electrician. Like you're wiring it up with switches and doing all that cool stuff. So it's great seeing what people can come up with using their imagination and creativity. But I am nowhere near on that level, and much rather watch them do it. How about you guys? Mike, how are you? I'm actually on the opposite side of the spectrum from you guys. I am a creative person. I love to build things. So games like uh, Civilization, uh, City Skylines, uh, um, Planet Coaster, um, uh, not so much Minecraft, uh, more like Terraria, um, uh, St- even Stardew Valley, because that's kind of like you know, uh, kind of like a building sim, you know, uh, simulation type thing. Um, I love those games to death, and I will play the living hell out of them. Even Kerbal Space Program. I may not get as, you know, mathy and science as other people, but I will build something, and I will see which way it will go. And then, you know, I'll, I'll just, you know, what, what do you call that? Uh, trials and, ter- you know, just trials and just, you know, keep trying different stuff till it gets where I need it to go. Um, one, The one thing I do watch on Twitch, and I watch Twitch pretty often, is I like to watch uh, a few the people who play, like, uh, the 2D uh, fighters, you know, because I am not good at them at all. Okay. And I watch the 2D fighters, and I will watch uh, stuff like, uh, um, you know, uh, Dark Souls, you know, because I'm not that great at it. Um, you know, I completed one and two, but I have not completed three yet just because I'm just lazy and haven't been playing it. Um, and a lot, and sometimes I will watch the first-person shooters because I'm just not that great at them. But as far as the creative thing goes, yeah, and Sims, you know, all that kind of stuff, I am down like nobody's business. Hmm. All right. So for me, um, I think Kerbal Space Program is a great answer, oh, yeah. and I don't want to steal your answer, so I'll give you a different one. Um, anything that rhymes with Dark Souls <laughs> uh, um, is for me you know, to watch because I can't deal with those games. Have you played Bloodborne? No, and I, I hate Souls games, but Bloodborne is a fantastic game. I love Bloodborne. Yeah, it's a Souls game. Go figure. Well, not yeah. Well, that's what but I, was I hate Souls games. I it's mean, pretty I, much the same game, isn't it? Yeah, no, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, almost. It's just Souls light, like barely light. I, I think it's easier personally than the Souls games. Like, I had a it, lot of difficulty with uh, the Souls games. It's it, interesting because I was so excited to buy a PS4, right? And I got one mm-hmm. on like release day. And then I, you know, I'm like super excited for like the Order eighteen eighty six. And then the game's like, you know, 35 minutes long. So I didn't get that. Yeah. And then I'm really excited for Bloodborne. And then I hear it's just like Dark Souls. So I'm like, fuck that. I didn't get that. You know, and it's just this ongoing chain of stuff. And it's like this reason I don't get exclusive games. Now I do want to get Uncharted 4. Mm-hmm. I, I still plan on buying that. And I do buy MLB The Show every year. Mm-hmm. But... But no, to answer your question, I have not played Bloodborne because it's like Dark Souls, and no thank you. And he's a big pussy. 
If you want to call me that with those games, fine. But you know, I'm sorry, but like dying honestly, every dude, dying every forty seconds is not fun. Okay, so I'll tell you right now, Bloodborne. It may start out like that, maybe the first thirty minutes, but once you learn the mechanics, like I, I've I've played, I've, I've tried, I bought Demon Souls, I bought the first Dark Souls. Um, I I didn't get into two and three because I didn't like the first Dark Souls. Uh, it, it's it's a lot different. Dark Souls feels very repetitive to me, and Demon Souls was just awful. And I think a lot of people think that Demon Souls just doesn't live up to Dark Souls, um, um, but I, it, okay. it's a lot. Bloodborne, the atmosphere, the bosses, uh, the uh, the world, it, it's just a fantastic game. And yes, it is difficult, but once you 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 get OP eventually, like you you get you get so overpowered eventually that. Uh, it, the game is not difficult anymore. And once you learn bosses and once you learn the mechanics, the game actually becomes almost easy. Um, okay. And I and I, I could never get that from Dark Souls. I probably put twenty and twenty five hours in Dark Souls, and and it, it it always seemed difficult. When you die, the bosses get harder. Yeah, I mean, it, it's huh? ridiculous. But Wait, Bloodborne's what? a little bit different. Well, I mean, it, it feel wasn't there some kind of mechanic in it to where the bosses actually did get a little bit stronger after you died. No, no, that's just maybe if you, I'm thinking if you complete maybe, the game and you go into the the next round, which is like NG plus, and but, then yeah, uh, but, only thing you do is you learn the move set of the boss and then you figure it out. But those games are nothing but patience. You know, you can figure everything out by not attacking the boss and just just avoiding everything. You know, eventually, that, eventually, in Bloodborne though that the the bosses, yes, they have their own little tweaks uh, right. and weaknesses, but you, you learn them very quickly. You don't have to die. There's a See, point in the game yeah. where you get, except for the, there's some extreme bosses in that game, like some secret ones, like there's a giant spider and uh, the end yeah. game boss is a little bit different. But uh, um, once you get to a certain point, it, it becomes a lot easier. It gets a lot easier. I love that yeah. game. I'll yeah, but, but not like a, I'm like a major fanboy of Dark Souls or anything like that. I, right. I, like, I like the games a lot. But sure. it, seriously, it rewards the patient and it completely blue, um, brutalizes anybody who is not patient. Right. You know? right. You're right. right. So that's pretty much it. You know, you just got to chill and then you can make it through it. And you know what? You're going to get killed over and over and over again until you figure it out. Because you don't die in 17 hits, you die in three. So, so. the thing is for me, any game that has an achievement called Welcome to Dark Souls and you get when you die... <laughs> is not for me it's inevitable because I, I understand but you're talking about patience so you do not understand how much patience i have to display on a daily basis like before i come <laughs> home uh like before i come home and get to play video right. games so all right we're the last gonna... thing i want to do is display virtual patience we're getting off so, topic. anyway anyway mike to totally understand why those games are popular though because, you know, we've had listeners ask questions like, you know, hey, what's a game that that is not for you but you recognize is good? Dark Souls would be at the top of the list for me. I still think you'd be better at it than you think you would be. You just got to learn. It's, I think it's scared yeah. a lot of people. Kind of like, 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 like your first run in 4 is a 3, dude. You just weren't oh. used to the controls and, and oh, yeah. the, the terrain and, you know, hey. getting getting used to it. But oh. by your third or fourth race, you'll be destroying worlds. You know? hey, it's, it's the same thing. I think you'd be better at NHL than you think, but you'd be, you know, if you were <laughs> oh, kind of a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna you. I'm, I'm always get smashed into the boards and the left side. The other one goes the running in the fucking Are you done? Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah, Merry Christmas, everybody. We're all doing Moving on. All right. What's the next question, everybody? Mike, hold on. Yes, sir. Mike. Uh, yes, sir. The next question is the winner of the grand prize. The All big right. prize. No, wait, my wait, big wait. package. Are Mike, you done? Mike, give me a drum roll. Wait. Oh, are we giving that, uh, the the other runner up a tenor? Yes. yes. So, okay. uh, congratulations to who? God damn it. Uh, <laughs> to the guy we just read the question about a game so rather... congratulations to Mike who sucks in NHL and to Steven our listener, Weisman. It Steve Weisman, Steven Weisman, Weisman. Weisman. Thank who you asked Steve. the question thank you congratulations bro. Steve send, send me a message on Facebook yeah. and I will send you a $10 Xbox Live code uh, if you do not have Xbox I, I will send you $10 on yeah. 
whatever platform you want, PlayStation, yeah, and, Steam, and Wii Nintendo. U, I guess. And Steven, 3DS. And, yeah, and Steven, just a couple things real quick. One, I know uh, you go to a university in Southern California, so one. Woo! Oh, is this the anybody, guy? Yeah, so anybody Yo, who... Oh, good job, anybody, dude. Hey, nice job. Uh, Merry Christmas to you. Um, anybody who goes to university, you know, please share the show with your friends. If you enjoy it, I know we're a little ridiculous this week. It is, it is Christmas. Um, but uh, we've but all been please, drinking. Yeah, pretty much. But um, This is a please, day in the life. <laughs> yeah, that is a day in life for Mike. But please share the show with your friends. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure in a dorm, like most rooms have gaming consoles in them. So, uh, share the show, a great way to grow the show. Next week, we're going to talk about New Year's resolutions, both for ourselves, for gaming, and for the show. And growing the show is going to be a big focus of that. So, best way to do that is just tell your friends, man. Um, get them on board. So happy. Uh, thank you for the, the, the nice things you said about the show on Facebook this week. Um, really nice things to say. So, hey, are you fucking done over there? Are you going to swipe, <laughs> are you gonna swipe right on Tinder? Good guy. lord! I'm, you know, hey, or grinder okay. if you're Mike. No, well, I mean, I mean Mike, if it's grinder, you might. So, anyway, <laughs> but hey, enjoy the enjoy the ten dollar gift card, man. Thank guys, you, guys. What? Drum roll, Mike, for the grand Alrighty, prize. All righty, here we go. Tyler, go ahead. All right, our grand prize winner. And I want to say before we read the question, uh, this show, you you're done, Mike. You're good. You're good. No, nope. just stop it. You haven't said anything. All right. All right, so this guy's been a great fan of the show throughout the year, um, from pretty much the very beginning of watching the podcast. Justin Rasmussen, also known as Raz Hemi Power. Yeah! Congratulations, um, buddy. Raz, uh, Raz, before we get into your question, I just want to say, hey, thank you. You've been, uh, you've been our biggest supporter since, like, day one, literally. Uh, running this podcast, um, you've been awesome. So, uh, not only have you just been a listener every week and sent questions and all that stuff, but you set up our group on Xbox uh, Live. You set, you've done different things. You've been a huge part of the conversation on on our uh, forums, mm-hmm. all those things. So, I'm just sorry, uh, with us, the long like Xbox way. group. Yep. So, yeah, to me uh, on Xbox. Yep. yep. So, just a huge thank you to you for everything that. That you've done, and uh, you know, hope that you stay with us for years to come. Uh, once we're in the realm of you know thousands years. of listeners per episode. Holy, Holy shit! Yeah. So, thank you again. We'll, we'll get to your question here, and then we'll get into what awesome things you have won. So, first of all, the question is: So uh, he sent a three-part question. We're gonna make it two because. He said he asked us to list like our top five genres, gaming genres. So what we're gonna do is list our our best one, our like our favorite one, and then if we have like a runner up that you want to mention, throw it out. Um, and then also, what's your favorite game in your your favorite genre? So Mike, let me go to you first. Fucking with these assholes. That's my favorite genre. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, okay, that's your answer. My no, turn. No, it's not, <laughs> it's not my answer. Uh, MMORPGs. Okay. Uh, my favorite game of all time in there, and I made a lot of money on eBay and pissed, pissed off the girlfriend I was with at that time because I was just playing on straight up ignoring her. But she watched soap opera, so fuck her. Um, really? Is Star Wars Galaxies. It is only okay. available through mm. a small group, and it's obviously not official anymore. Um, that was an amazing game. There were there were many planets. There you just did what you wanted to do. It was a real sandbox game with skills. You know, I was a weaponsmith, and so I made a lot of friends because I would make the weapons, and they used an Oracle database, so nothing was ever the same. And so. You could make, you know, like a 99% good weapon, or you could make a 96% good weapon, or a 30. And people would come to, and they had player housing everywhere. It was great. You know, you'd be so far outside of the city, and, you know, they, people would come to, your, come to your house and, you know, buy stuff from you. It got to the point where I would log on, and before the screen would come up, I would start getting the, the, the town noises. Dink, 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 you know. And I made a lot of good friends on there, and I actually yeah. made a lot of money on, 
on eBay from that. I made close to probably about 5K from selling the, wow. the, the money from back then. And that was like selling half of the money that I had. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the bad thing happened. Um, I don't remember his name, but he is a white boy with a Spanish last name. And them and LucasArts, him and LucasArts decided to change the game out of the blue and change it to what would be like the view you get in Gears of War where you're kind of like offset on the shoulder, you know? And there was pretty much no more, no, no more, everything was linear. Um, it, they, they changed everything so much that the 200 to 300,000 people that they had subscribed, they lost down to about 20K. I thought you were going to say change it to like the view where there's all these chicks sitting around talking about the game, but whatever. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> so, basically, they, they... So, what happened when that happened? Uh, it was, uh, uh, you know, everything got set on fire, everybody left, you know, massive riots, you know, to, to people talked with their wallets, and so the game died. They, they yep. literally killed the game themselves. Because they thought it was called the NGE, the New Gaming Experience. Sure, and yeah. That was going to be I remember that. what everybody wanted. And it was yep. the exact opposite of what everybody wanted. Because if they wanted that, they could go play another game that had that stuff. But this was, you know, you pretty much dicked around and was create, were creative and, you know, went out. And, you know, you could hunt, uh, you know, certain beasts for pearls. You know, you could, you know, make weapons. The greatest thing was is, is the resource thing. Because um, you would go out and you find resources and you would mine for them. But they changed every week kind of like, a, you know... And then they have they had yeah. all kinds of stats on them. It was really good. It really was, and it was well worth putting your time into it. And then they just completely fucked it. And so, so unfortunately, the game doesn't exist anymore. But that was my favorite game of all time. So you excited for the, the open world Amy Hedden game, Star Wars game coming out soon? Um, Ish. You should be like eighteen. <laughs> yeah. No. What? Well, you remember you saw that we saw that brief clip last year at E3 of uh, that Amy Hennig game coming out for Star, uh, open world Star Wars game. Amy Hennig from Uncharted. Yep. It was Uncharted. like a behind yep. the scenes video. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I, no, I don't. I don't know anymore because Ralph Coster was was with Star Wars Galaxies. Is the same dude who who pretty much had everything to do. Mm. Shut the hell up. <laughs> Had everything to do with Ultima Online, and Ultima Online was another sandbox type game with the whole same thing. Unless somebody like that is involved with it, I pretty much have no faith in what they call a sandbox these days. I I have faith in Amy Hennig. I, I think she's uh, a phenomenal game writer. Um, she left Uncharted Four to go work on the Star Wars game, so it, yeah. it's going to be big. We'll see. And, I hope so. I think. I, I think. So. Uh, you know, I don't think. Do you guys think we're going to see this game in 2017? No. I think it'll be 2018, no. don't you? Yeah, I would say no. Or yeah, later. I mean, it could be later. I, I think it might be in, in tune in line with episode 9. It really might. It, it wouldn't surprise me. But but anyway, um, that that's a game that's coming out there. Who would like to go next? I'll go. I'm going to keep what? it super short. Um, I'm going to go smoke say a cigarette. Action RPG. And the game I'm going to choose is Legend of Zelda... Link to the Past, right. and that's my game. That's the one that got me into the series, and I love it. And that's it. But uh, I want to say personally, Raz, thank you for being a longtime supporter, probably the biggest supporter of the show. Greatly appreciate it, and uh, hope you stick around, and hopefully we keep uh, keep you happy. Yeah, Raz, go fuck you. yourself. Hey, disregard, wow. disregard that guy. We'll deal with him later. Wow. Oh, he doesn't take it personally. All right. <laughs> Eugene, what do you got? I'm going to say JRPGs. Okay. From from a younger age. That, that's what really got me into games. I was uh, telling a story to Graham earlier um, about how I sold my Super Nintendo and I had all these super rare games, uh, old JRPGs, Earthbound, uh, both Final Fantasies, um, Super Mario RPG. Uh, Secret of Mana, uh, I, I, I had a great collection, and I sold it to get a PlayStation just so I could play Final Fantasy VII. Um, mm. J Japanese RPGs, uh, really, uh, when, when I was younger, I, 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 we really didn't have a lot of money for games. 
I mean, that was really a time in my life where, you know, I only got like two or three games a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't play a lot of games unless I, 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 I did go to friends' houses and things like that and borrow games um, to play. But really, uh, um, whenever it came time for birthday or Christmas, that's when I got my new games. Um, mm -hmm. And I would always ask for a, a big Squaresoft title or, yeah. uh, you know, uh, an X title um, sure. to play. So I, I invest a lot of time in Japanese RPGs. Love Japanese RPGs. They really, uh, um, not not only from the the length aspect, but just from the story. I mean, uh, the the story in in most uh, PlayStation JRPGs where where I played a lot of um, really. Uh, uh, <laughs> Get it out, man. Losing my thoughts. Use your uh, words. And you're yawning yeah. at mine. Oh no, that wasn't me. That's was Tyler. I know. No. But, uh, it's boring Star Wars, but anyway, uh, JRPGs. I love JRPGs. JRPGs uh, are will so always exciting. be my. Uh, I, I, <laughs> shut up, God damn I'm, I'm just messing. No with one, you, dude. no one's even heard of. I am just Star Wars with Galaxy. You. Anyway, hey, uh, hey. my favorite, my favorite JRPG has got to be Chrono Trigger for the SNES. I've said it before. Chrono Trigger for the SNES. I love. Uh, Tyler, on to you. Cool. All right. Wait, so, wait, 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 wait. All right, wait. go ahead, Mike. Remember, some, remember something here. Um, in JRPGs, less armor on females is more AC. Going on to Tyler. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mike, for nothing. Um, so I know I've talked a lot. I know I've talked a lot in the past about Bioshock, and I've talked a lot in the past about uh, how much I love games like Call of Duty Two, uh, games like that. But over the years, my favorite genre has been and continues to be um, the sports genre. And yeah, so. Um, my favorite game in that genre is NHL 09. Hmm. And the reason for that is that I grew up um, playing a lot of sports as a kid. And, you know, I learned a lot of things like, you know, not, you know, I know I know it's like podcast rules to not get too into the personal life. But, you know, I, 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 yeah, it is. But I, I, uh, I had a dad who wasn't very involved in, uh in life as a kid growing up and uh so a lot of things i learned were from coaches i had and just great role models that i had and and uh you know about working as a team and playing as a team and and uh nobody should take the spotlight and all that type of thing and uh you know i, I really held on to those values kind of coming up as a kid and into high school and you know, then a game like NHL 09 comes out, and, and you can play as a team together uh, in an EA Sports Hockey League. And I don't know, I just really was drawn to it. And I was still, like, I, I still wasn't a big online player at that point. Like, I, I, I'd finished, you know, I'd done games like Bioshock, etc., and really enjoyed them. But I hadn't gotten too much into online play yet with any game. And... And uh, that was the type, that was the first game that I really got into playing online. I, I remember like being nervous before I first went to play like uh, games in NHL and I like online. Like, what if I freaking suck, you know? And uh, that's understandable because you don't want to hear anything from anybody else, right? And yeah, you, know, you get in them with friends though, and they're supportive, and uh, and it was cool. It was a lot of fun, and and it's a game that we play to this day. Yeah, you guys talk about it a lot, but it really holds a special place for me, and uh, not just Angel and I, but the series going on, and and but also it uh, it kind of you know empowered me uh, to play multiplayer in every game. So now I play like multiplayer in Titanfall Two and Battlefield One, and you know every other game that comes out. Like I don't care at this point, mm -hmm. but Angel and I was the first game that really did that for me. So um, that's uh, that's the first one, and and really. Uh, Kind of goes back to those those lessons I learned as a as a young kid, and and it, it, that's why it kind of holds that special place for me. But sports games have always, you know, kind of been that for me. Even though I love a, a lot of other genres too, but uh, but sports games have always kind of been that number one. Were you a champion? Were you yeah. a champion ever? When you played NHL back He's on the old days. He's a champion days. when he plays with me. Are you kidding? Hey, we were a champion like a month ago. Hell oh, yeah. Don't, you don't know, start with your when we donned the jerseys, 
of the oh, Minnesota right. North Stars. You know, Mike never ever thanked us for that achievement. Yeah, that Mike, th you're welcome I'm for that achievement, you Mike. Are welcome. I'm not thanking you for shit. I'm yeah. the one who got the achievement seven yeah. times. Bullshit. You're welcome for that achievement. You know what? We donned the jerseys. We earned. You don't, you're not just no, 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 no. no. Stop. No, you're done. You're done. Nice. We not only did we not only did we don the jerseys of the Minnesota North Stars, we earned the jerseys of the Minnesota North Stars, and we carried you to an achievement. You guys suck. Okay, you guys are a terrible fucking <laughs> game. Okay, you go plowing in, get plowed into the thing, turnover. He goes fucking rolling in for four people plow turnover. You know. Meanwhile, I'm running up and down the ice like I'm a okay. fucking okay. speed skater. So let me, okay. let me anyway, ask this. Anyways, let me there's, some, some, there's, there's something else I wanted to say All right. real quick. Okay. Um, that was, I, I don't know about this. We're not supposed to get hard felt things yeah. on, on the podcast and stuff because yeah. I talked about Goose in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think, my friend, you went to a little bit of a loss, and I think that, sh that story should have been directed towards the first runner up because I think that was fitting. Yeah. But anyways, you two suck balls. You really do. Just pass the puck. <laughs> so, I figured that the people you were playing only had one hand. Mike, before we go. Before we go, Mike, can I ask just one question? Oh, boy. I, I, I can't even. I can't. What? When, when, were, when was there time? When the three of us played together in NHL, that we won the playoff championship. Oh, we can't with Graham because Graham Rambo's oh, everything. Oh, 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 time out, time out. Because me and Graham played together and won. I don't even know how. I it can't. It happened. It's, it's There's like a when banner. two cards collide. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine us holding up a Minnesota North Stars banner. Are, are you guys done? It's like, it's like you guys, guys are done. We're done with NHL. We're done with NHL. What did Raz mean? Yo, Eugene, when you, when you buy in uh, NHL. Raz is on our team Christmas NHL. Christmas Boxing and, Day Monday, Graham. And if Raz ever signs into the goddamn game, he will get the achievement for winning I, the playoff championship. Graham, I think you can. I think you were playing must NHL 17 for only 30 loonies. I have no oh idea. My God. How you so. two knuckleheads manage. <laughs> anyway. All right, all right, all right. Let's bring it back together. About what Raz won. So, Raz. Yes, Raz. What did you win? <laughs> what did he win? A fantastic gaming package. Yes. And not just a gaming package, but a very nerdy package. Yes. Uh, we will see, be sending you items from Nintendo. From Titanfall, from Star Wars, amongst other things that I, I can't even list because your your package is huge, Raz. I just want to oh, talk. You're, you're wow. fucking. Oh I'm my god! There, there goes Grinder right there. Yeah. The dude's promoting Grinder. I, I don't know what that is, Mike. So, yes, you do. Raz on Guys. top. Of, so Raz on top of your giant package. Oh god. <laughs> You're Guys, Google grab Grinder. Go on Google. And we Google. just lost every female listener. <laughs> <laughs> so. On top of that, uh, you're going to win the game of your choice. So uh, email me as soon as you listen to the episode. Uh, let me know which game you'd like. Base okay. game. Base game. So don't go nuts and be like deluxe edition of whatever, you know. Like uh, like whatever edition Graham got of of um, Fallout 4 that has the little this thing on it. Yeah. Um, so base edition of a game. Any, um, game. Yeah. any new game any new game battlefield overwatch battlefield overwatch and if you want something in the future we want resident evil 7 we'll make that happen resident you want evil. you know steep for whatever reason we'll make yeah. that happen he doesn't um, Don't so, get it. so we'll we'll, uh, we'll make it happen let us know uh but thank you so much uh for being part of that Stop Guys, laughing. We're, yeah we're <laughs> i'm just laughing at you thinking that you somehow earned the playoff championship but whatever mm -hmm. um I am. Uh, I didn't because I wasn't with. Can the we can we just edit retards. that entire conversation out? No, we can't. We're gonna leave it oh there. God. Uh, but anyway, Raz, thank you so much for seriously. Thank you so much for being a great part of our community from the beginning. No idea. How uh, we appreciate it. Are you done? I hate him. We're trying to appreciate oh, something. Email Raz. Email us your email address. Yes. Or, I'm sorry, your actual physical address, <laughs> so we can send you. Our, our beautiful package. And we're almost through this, guys. We're almost through. I, the only thing I can think of is with you two playing is that dog video. <laughs> I get we won the whole damn thing. I don't so even anyway, know how. 
So, Raz, all you left their controllers down or used their Raz, pieces. Okay, are you done? No. Okay, because Raz, you can just send Eugene your your physical address, send me your email address, and I'll be able to send you the code. Here's the deal, Raz. Whatever game you want. You have to join our Facebook group. <coughs> you gotta get in, brother. Oh, I know. I'm, I know I'm you just hate. Hey, you, you can come, email. Come to email, the dark email, side. Email mail at third some. I mean, even Mike. Mike yes. made a Facebook page yeah. today yeah. just so he can put up his dumb pictures of Graham getting arrested. Yeah. <laughs> so well, you, you laugh. Send a, send us your address, mail at thirdsongaming.com, or join our Facebook group. And I might even throw in an extra special. Oh, there you go. Something something extra special in your package. Free month of grinder. God. Free month Shut of up, Mike. <laughs> Just let it go, guys. Just let it go. All right. Does grinder cost money? You, you Mike, you invest money. Mike, in do you, are you informed on this? <laughs> oh God, here it comes. Here comes the wave. It's like all of a sudden everybody went, huh? Oh, let's get him now. We brought up yeah. grinder, but we're gonna make him pay. <laughs> <laughs> of course, those sites. Everyone, every dating site in the world uh, costs money. Don't even try that shit. <laughs> okay, Mike. I'll send you. I know what to get you for Boxing Day. Again, yeah, the grinder. <laughs> Yeah, ten dollars. So everybody, hey, uh, everybody, whoa, everybody in our community, every in our community, if you're interested in sending like a gift, just give them a free month of grinder. We're good to go. It'd be greatly appreciated. Raz, we're not giving you any money for grinder. No, we you don't get anyway. We don't support grinder. that. We don't support open relationships. And oh my god, <laughs> Merry Christmas! There was a time. Merry Christmas, everybody! Like, it was like a time where we wanted this episode to be serious, but I think we're kind of past that point. So, so oh Jesus! All right, we, All right. we crossed so, that line a long time. I think ago. Jesus is long checked out too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so well, let's call this episode number twenty nine of the Third Sun Gaming Podcast. Congratulations to all of our winners, and again, thank you so much for contributing to the show by sending in questions. Please continue to do that via our Facebook page, via email at mail at thirdsungaming.com like Raz did, or you can go on to our Xbox group at, uh, just look up Third Sun Gaming on there, and send in questions for the show. We're going to continue giveaways in the month of January. It's just going to be a little bit different than it is now. Are you done? You can't make it through one outro hey. without fucking giggling. I so swear. one more episode for this year. So we got one more episode this year. Next week, we're going to be back with New Year's resolutions, both for <laughs> gaming as individuals and for our show, where, where we'd like to take our show in the next 12 months. Hopefully, not to, hopefully not to Grinder, But <laughs> oh, uh, Michael has something to say about it, so who knows? Oh, boy. So... <laughs> For Mike, for Grammy, for Eugene, I'm Tyler's thing for saying Grindr. thank you. We're Grinder. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. We're gonna get a gift sure. basket yes. from them. We are yeah. a Grinder page for our our. Third you, you know, you might as well. You would. Point. I mean, you already got a profile anyway. Swipe right. right you might as well at this point. Mike will be the first one. I'm to assuming off, it's just so. like Tinder. You swipe <laughs> right on our page. Yeah. We're lovely people. I don't know. Mike, Christmas Mike is Mike. Is that how it works? <laughs> Seriously. We have anyway. packages for you to send to you. <laughs> they're still, you, you see, guys, everybody out there, they're still going on and on about uh, it. Oh, so have a good, fair. very so, merry Christmas. For Mike, for Graham, for Eugene, I'm Tyler saying thank you so much for listening to episode 29 and enduring us for this long. Um, thank you. <laughs> we'll be back next week with episode 30. With New Year's resolutions for both ourselves as individuals and for our show. Um, until then. Stay safe. Have a great holiday, everybody. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Yep. Merry Christmas. Uh, whatever you celebrate. Happy Boxing Day. Yeah, whatever you celebrate, happy holidays, everybody. Have a great holiday. And, uh, enjoy your family. And, uh, enjoy your friends. We'll be back next week with episode number 30. Thank you so much. Stay safe, everybody. Goodbye. Merry Christmas. Bye.